All right, test one. Good. Okay. Okay. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Village of Royal Palm Beach Special Magistrate hearing for Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. As I like to say, is if you have a code enforcement issue, you're in the right place. My name's Doug McGibbon. I'm the Special Magistrate. First thing I'm going to do is swear everyone in. We'll probably do this multiple times as strays wander in. So please raise your right hand, say I do when we're done. Does everyone swear or affirm the testimony they are about to give as the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Say I do. All right. Very good. Most of our hearings this evening will be either fine assessment hearings or violation hearings. When you hear your name, please go up to the podium over there. You'll identify yourself. The village will show you some documentation that they wish to enter into evidence. You have an opportunity to object. Um, they will present testimony. You can question their witness, and, and you can present your own testimony. That flips when we get to the fine reduction cases at the end. Those people have been through a violation and a fine assessment hearing. They are asking for relief, so they get to go first because they're the people who want their fines reduced. So with that being said, please take it away, Village of Royal Palm. Thank you, sir. Amity Barnard, Assistant Village Attorney. We're starting on the agenda. Fine assessment hearings, page one. The first case is 22-1378-858 Croton Drive, Leslie Geety. All right, whoever's on that case, hop on up there. Dana Foley, Code Officer for the Village of Royal Palm Beach. Um, we'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. And exhibit three, pictures. All right, you have an affidavit of service and a USPS tracking confirmed, so you have service March. Okay, you can proceed. Your name for the record, ma'am? Leslie Guiti. Thank you, I'm sorry I mispronounced it. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits that we'd like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objections to those documents? It's the previous order, the notice documents for tonight's hearing. Any objection to those papers? Um, not really. Uh, I actually got it done by the date that I was given, but I guess it wasn't done properly. I had it redone, and I have the paperwork to prove that. She did call me, and oh, I, I went out, but it was. you can look at the pictures. I told her to bring in her receipts because I said, if you hired somebody to do this, it needs to be redone. So she did send somebody else out there, and it's very clean now. Okay, so it's, it's just, just going to be after a the fact. No, fine, well, you get, yeah. you're going to finding a factor. Is that what we're it doing? It actually complied on three seven. Your previous order required compliance by two twenty three. So the fine amounts two seventy five and not continuing. Do you have additional paperwork with you that shows when it was done? Is that date three seven? She did, I haven't seen it, but she did call me. So she called you before the violation she had, date? She had called me, yes, before this time, and it just wasn't done um, good enough. So I told her to bring in her receipts to you. Okay. All right, so she did have it done before, but it was not done up to the yes. standards of Royal Palm Beach. So you asked her to redo it, and they did, and, and it's did. good. And we have a $225 bill here, which would almost buy you a pressure cleaner. Another 75 bucks, and you'd own one. <laughs> if you want. I mean, I've burned three out of my lifetime. Um, given that she did have the job done by someone else, and it was not her fault, it was unacceptable, and that she actually redid it at your insistence, I'm going to do a finding of fact and not a fine on this case. Okay, okay? thank you. Just for clarification, it would be an order assessing. She already had. There's already a violation order, so it would just be an order assessing no fine. Order assessing no fine will work too. I'm giving you, you uh, credit for trying hard, and it wasn't your fault that it wasn't fixed, and you got it fixed again. So, I'm not going to add insult to injury. Thank you so much. You'll get an order in the mail. Good evening. That's a good way to start. Okay, we'll watch it go down. Next one is the one right below it. Twenty-two dash fourteen eighty one zero one seven five patients lane. Andrew and Heather T. Alkire. We would like to enter the following Leslie. into evidence. Exhibit one, order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, permit information.
Your name for the record, sir? Andy Olkar. Thank you. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? It's the previous order, the notice documents for tonight's hearing. No. Thank you, All sir. All right. Admitted without objection. I see you have a signed green card, so you have service. This one remains out of compliance. It's been out for seven days, so we're seeking a fine of 175 and continuing. All right. Tell us your side. Um, well, since the last hearing, I have a timeline here um, with corrections and different things. I've been going back and forth with them online. Um, I actually got a, uh, um, a plan fee due request, which I paid the plan fee on February 8th which I assumed the permit was going to come after that, and I could set the inspection to go ahead and do it, which happened like with the fence that I had to do once I paid the fee. I got the permit. I set up the inspection. Um, that was on February 8th, and then uh, almost two weeks later, February 21st, um, I got another correction notice sent to me, which I resubmitted um, the next day, and then another uh, correction. So I keep submitting the corrections the day that I get them, and it's a new one each time it's not the corrections all at one time i received another one yesterday which i'm going to do tonight when i get home and i just keep going back and forth doing a correction when they send it to me send it back i figured i'd get the permit on february 8th when i paid for the fine i mean they got my money already i figured i'd have the permit and i wouldn't be here today and it'd be done but i've had two corrections since then and i've already paid for the permit Planning and zoning. Yeah. He's he's correct. It's, Were you sworn? Connor? I mean, I have an entire timeline here from the last hearing from December fourteenth. I mean, if you want me to read it down, I'm no, I mean, no, 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 no. We're, you know, we're, I'm trying to stay on top of it as as much as I can. I yeah, just want to get it done. But he's been in the office multiple times, and it's going to go status slash fine assessment for next month, and hopefully, you'll have everything issued by then. I mean, yeah, I'm going to resubmit the correction again. They sent me yesterday tonight when I get home, and that's all I can do. I mean. Well, no, I've just set you for a status slash fine assessment hearing for next month, okay, so which okay. hopefully gives you enough time for the things to get issued because I've been told by the staff here that you are a familiar face now. Mm -hmm. So you get points for being in a lot, and you're not going to get tagged with a fine now. You're going to get a little more time. So okay, can I ask you a question? So when, when I submit this stuff to the building department, <laughs> why is it every correction is something different and not just – Here's everything we need so I can just do it all at one time instead of dragging it out. You know, I send a correction. I think we're good. Something else new comes in. Then I got to submit that and something else new again. And it's not just everything all at one time. And we only have one case running right now. Um, I do not know because, because that's kind of why, that's that's kinda why it's dragging it's on like this. Because you, I, you, you know. want my answer? You just want to keep going because I've already given you some relief. The answer is I have no clue. I mean, I can assume that I can assume that different departments or different people are looking at different things and they aren't doing it all at once. I don't know okay. because I don't work there. Yeah, so it, what happens is it comes to building first. Mm -hmm. We do our review. Once it leaves building and you pay for it, it then goes upstairs to planning and zoning and multiple reviewers are going to look at it. Okay. So if you're getting it back multiple times, it could be different people. Yeah, it I could mean, start so, out with the setback issue and work into a height issue or right. something else. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. Yeah, so since I've paid for it on February 8th, I've gotten one, two, now yesterday, the third right. correction, yeah. and it's something different every time. So and that's why you're getting more time, and it's, you know, you know, I don't know why. And if you want to sit down with them and ask later, you can probably find out exactly what was it, it was. But yeah, yeah, if you wanted to speak with the XC, that's the reviewer that's looking at it, we can. Um, tomorrow, if you want to call the office, we could give you her number. That okay. way you can speak to her directly. Yeah, I mean, I'd just to like to it. find out, like, everything all at yeah. one time they're looking for. Yeah, it, so it, would be just... it would be nice in the best of all possible worlds, but like like they say, it starts out with building, and then it goes over to planning and zoning. Okay. And different departments have to check different things. You know, they're just making sure that you have an application and a fee. The other people are making sure you meet the setbacks, mm. height requirements, slab permits. I have no idea. So you need to talk to them directly. Okay. Just a question I can't ask. Answer. Okay. Okay. All right. You're going to get an order that says you we will need be to back set a new compliance date next month, and 
Well, Hopefully. we need to set a new compliance date of if you could do April seventh yeah. and then appearance at Four, the seven, April twelfth status Four, slash fine and then maintain the 20, previous twenty five dollar day. You said April seventh? No, April twelfth. You need to have everything issued by the seventh, which is why you're getting an additional month basically for them to get your permits out. So, so I need to be. It needs to be finalized by the seventh. If it's done by the seventh, make sure you talk to the code enforcement officer, and you will probably get excused. And if you're really smart, you'll get an email saying that you're excused, so you can have an excuse not to be here. Okay, and then and that hearing would be April twelfth. You said. Correct, and you'll get that in in an order. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you. Moving to page two, still a fine assessment hearing 22 1543 1222, Stardust Way, Fausto J. Figueroa. Code Enforcement Officer Margaret Hancock of Village Rural Palm Beach. Life tender of the following documents and evidence. Exhibit one, previous order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, AS 400 permit information. All right. You have an uh, affidavit to post and you have service. Your names for the record? Name? Fausto uh, Figueroa. And is she going to help you translate your name, ma'am? Su nombre? Yours? JC Everett. Spell it? J C I S Y. Everett. Everett? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Those documents I just handed to you are the, I handed to him, I guess, are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Any objection to those documents? It's the notice documents for tonight, the previous violation order. Any objection to just those papers? Okay. Okay. I don't hear an objection, so they're admitted. All right, so we have a fence without a permit, and he still doesn't have a permit according to the AS 400. Is that correct? It's in plan check. It's in plan check. It just okay. went in on the 24th of February. Okay, so how long does that normally take? Just curious. A couple takes, weeks? Yeah. Right now it's about two weeks. Okay. So they say your permit is being reviewed. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So. This one, your previous order required compliance by 223. We're at March 8th, so we were asking for a fine to start. It's 13 days. That's, that'd be $325 in continuing. They also have been in a few times. Unfortunately, yeah. at the beginning, it sat with them for quite a while, but I've seen them recently three or four times in the last two weeks. So they are trying to. Unfortunately, they didn't appear at the violation hearing. Yeah, just... unfortunately, they didn't appear. We could have given a little more direction then, but they, they seem to have gotten to the point where they are self-motivated and they are coming in. So Alkir gets, well, they're going to get the Alkir treatment then, I think. Because I'm not going to start finding them if they submitted a permit on the 28th. 24th. 24th, they and were we are here two weeks 24th. later, and well, most of the time that their well, fine has accrued so has been in plan check. When did they submit the permit application? Yeah. Originally, they submitted in November. It sat with them for quite a while, and then right. they must have gotten an order, and that's when they... Started well, they, coming in. they figured out they needed to come in because yeah. some people just think they do it and it comes back magically. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not mad at what they've done. They've okay. they've moved it along once they've got a little prompting. So let's go status find them for four seven four twelve again. And the village yeah. will be seeking just so they and, understand and yeah. if it doesn't if it doesn't if, if there's do no it. progress we can't keep kicking. Yeah no no they um, can. Someone's gonna get fined here tonight. Just it's not the first three people. Okay. Thank you. So that's so four seven I've, four twelve twenty five. Yeah, I've moved you out because you're in. You're you've submitted the permit request, and it's basically waiting for the village to say yes or no. Okay. okay. Adios. Thank you. You'll get an order in the mail. And next. Now we're going to top of. Page 322-1544-835 Hibiscus Drive, Susie Wong.
We would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation and affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Exhibit 4, permit information. All right. You have an affidavit of service, so you have service and can proceed. <laughs> Your names for the record? Susie Wong. David Ricci, RICCI. RICCI? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits of the village would like to enter into evidence. It's the notice documents for tonight's hearing, the previous order. Any objection to those documents? The permit information is in there as well. This came signature sign? We had to sign for this? No, they posted it. That's the day I posted it. I, I spoke with you, Ms. Wong, outside. Okay. Yeah, she, you, she came to the house. Oh, okay. Okay. Any objection to those documents? Okay. No. Okay, thank you both. All right, so I've got to remember the gra gravel rocks mulch thing mm -hmm. from last time. Well, it was more of the enclosure. Yeah, this is... But I'm, I'm seeing here work done without a permit, door, enclosed room, et cetera, which seems to be a little more serious than the landscaping issues. So please proceed, village. Tell me what's going on. Well, right now, no, nothing's been done. I mean, they started, they just applied for the application today. For the, the, for the enclosure. Oh, for the enclosure. Mm -hmm. We also, you said you know, verbatim was get something sorted. Well, the, we couldn't contact anyone from the list for drawing. Half of the list you gave us, there's no more number there. So half those people don't exist. And then we were pricing out some through January, and it took us that long to find a gentleman who would then put us out four to six weeks before he could come to do the drawings. Then it was a three-week delay for the drawings. They're not even stamped yet. Hopefully they're going to be stamped tomorrow. So we had to wait for that to submit for the permit. So that was the drag on that situation. As far as the landscaping, I assumed we had to do the permitting at the same time. It turned out today that's what had to happen anyway, was to do the permit for the, apply for the permit for the landscaping. And that was going through all the species of the trees, diameters, heights. And we have a hundred, if not more, different types of trees and bushes and flowers. So that was the process. And thank God for the woman, Stephanie, Stephanie today, who helped Susie through it all uh, because it was, it was a lot to fill out. But we're, we're trying to stay on schedule with you guys. And certainly as soon as the permit's done, you know, I'll have that done within a week or two. Here's the problem. The first people, you know, the lady with the pressure cleaner, she did it on time and it wasn't done well and she did it again. And the second people, the fence people, they submitted in November, and they kind of got lost for a little while. And then they picked it back up when they got their violation order. And then they've been in three or four or five times since then. And then the next person, let's see, who's that? Who we got there? Oh, that's uh, the sheds on the property, and his stuff has been in for weeks and months, and they're <laughs> working their way through. And your stuff came in yesterday. Because we had to wait for the drawing, which was and over a month ago. Their fault. What's that? Is, is that the village's fault that you had no, to wait for the drawing? No, it's not the village's fault, but everything got delayed, no. and everybody's I, I understand that, but the question is, you know, see, I'm trying to be logically consistent with everyone here. I understand. And that. the people who are in early and trying to do things, and you know, not quite wake, working their way through the process, well, I understand. A lot of this is, you know, lack of computer skills in a lot of parts because no, everything's no. gone online and this things. This is failure of the people that we were calling. Well, the, in order the, to get back to us. Well, so the failure of the people you. calling, and then they didn't call you back, and then you had Most to get Most of which were your and, references that uh, you gave us. So we thought they would be pretty diligent to at least give us a number or to get out there to do okay, it. Okay, so now it's their fault that they gave no. you people that went out of business. No, 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 I'm not blaming anyone. I'm telling you exactly how it took place and why See, it took I, place. I get to the point when, you know, here's my last violation or my last fine assessment hearing. And, and everyone else tried really hard, and they were early on everything. 
and y'all built a room on somewhere, which is like, or a close something. We didn't build That's been there for 30 years. Well, there's a work done without a permit door, enclosed room, et cetera. They added the door, and that's I, I added the door. They added the door, the and that's what made everyone look. So right. you, you said, hi, look at my new stuff, and they no, all did. No, so, It was, hey, I don't want to walk in the rain to the side of the house. So you, so, you cut a door in so the I, side. I, I put a door into the, uh, into the garage area Yeah, and instead of a garage door. Instead of a garage door. So you have another door out there which wasn't permitted, right? The door on the front, yeah. So this is where we get to stop pushing everything along and do a fine here. This one's been out for seven days, so we're asking for a fine of $175 and continuing. You need to press through with all this stuff, and you can come back for a fine reduction hearing later. But right now, I'm at a point where I don't see the activity that I saw in the other cases, so I'm going to go forward with the fine. Okay. Okay. All right. You'll get an order in the mail. Thank you. Okay. Do we get a date for the next time? Or? You're going to, you'll, as soon as you get these things issued, make sure code enforcement knows so they can stop the fine. You get an affidavit of conformity, and that's what you need to do to get a reduction hearing anyway. Is you need to get an affidavit of conformity so when they stop the fines, you can, you can ask for a reduction. Okay? Okay. But I'm sorry. I, that's okay. I, the hundred and fifty five dollars isn't a fine, that's a running fine. One hundred and seventy five and it continues to run at twenty five dollars a day until you get compliance. But as the magistrate said, once you get compliance you can request a fine reduction oh, here. So I can't pay it tonight. No, because you're not in compliance. Continue. It runs every day. So tomorrow it'll be two hundred dollars and after it keeps right. going until you comply, but then you can come back to him and ask for reduction okay. later. And okay. this is until the permit gets granted. And once the permit gets granted, everything stops. It's oh, until all the violations no. get cured. The, yeah, right. That could be two or three weeks more. It, it could be, know, yes. Five or eight hundred dollars. I've got ones from 2015 and 2016 right now asking for, for reductions. I'm sure they're in the twenty, forty thousand dollar range. Sure. So you're you're looking at hundreds right now. Just keep it down to that. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Appreciate Thank it. you. Next, we're on violation hearings, page four, case twenty two dash seventeen seventy four seven sixty nine Camellia Drive, Stephen. Jay Broadhead. They're trying to find your file. What's your name, sir, while you're there? Stephen Broadhead. Thank you. Do you need me to spell the last name? No, no, no you're, you're on the you're agenda. On the agenda you're good. So you're all good. And this is a violation hearing, so you have time to do things if we find a violation, which we may or may not do if we ever can find a file. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Oh, excuse me. The code section is 06190A1D and 15132. The structure is faded. Plan planning areas are overgrown. I observed this on 11122. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 11522 and was posted. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail on 11723 and was also posted. We would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing and Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Pictures. 
All right, you have service via post in here. <clears throat> Are those documents I handed you, are the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence? Do you have any objection to those documents? They're the notice documents. Um, Photos are on the screen. I never signed for any of the certified mail. Right. That's because you got posted on I, your door. I got because one, you... and I think I was, they left a door hanger like a week and a half, two weeks ago, and left me a copy of it. That's, that's service. Anyway. Anyhow, it's still, it's still valid service under Florida law, so you're here. Any other objections, sir, to those documents? Um, No. Thank right. you. I realized I had painted that house back in 99, and I'm about halfway done. I have pictures, the mailbox. No, 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 no. We're going to give you probably 30, 60 days to get it done. Uh, special matter, just for your notes, 06190D, as in dog, and 15132, which is the planting areas are overgrown, is finding a fact. Okay. The other code sections we were asking for compliance by April 27th or the May 10th hearing or $25 a day fine. You look like you're almost done with it. She I says mean, halfway. You I say almost done. I think I'm more than halfway painted. That's good. No, you I got the, the whole front is cleaned out, weeded. Right. There is not That's one little we weed in that right. mailbox area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hated those plants. They kept growing back. They were and pretty for a little while until they just kept weeding think up. 22 years ago when I painted it, it took me like a day and a half, two days. I did the whole house, but I'm we're not, we're not as young as we were 22 years ago yes. and, and it takes a lot longer. I, and last, the, last time I painted mine, I, I wrapped all the windows in plastic and my neighbor gave me a big old industrial size spray gun and it took me two days to wrap it and one day to paint it. It was fun, but now he's gone and I have to roll it. I tried to get All right, so notes. they're saying 427, which is the end of April, which means you probably have enough time to get it done because this is the beginning of March. You are at least picking the best time of year. I'm probably going to paint my house now before we hit rainy season and all the humidity hits. So 427, 510, or 25 is granted. Um, this applies to everyone in the room who has a violation hearing or any kind of hearing. You could be done tomorrow, but it doesn't count unless you get an inspection. So as soon as you finish the paint job, call Dina. Dina will come out. She will look at it. She will smile. She will put an affidavit of compliance in your file, and you will be done. Okay, so make sure that you proudly show off your work. We're guys. We love to show off our work. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Staying on the same page at the bottom, 22-1928, a correction to your agenda. It should be 124 West Court. Randy One, two, Ballin. Four. 124, yes, sir. Scrivener's areas or errors are easy to fix. Code section 622105.5, permit 2021-16 is expired. This was written on 12-27-22. The notice of violation was mailed out 12-28-22 and was signed for on 1-11-23. The notice of hearing was mailed out 1-26-23 and was signed for on 2-7-23. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership and exhibit for permit information. Okay. So your name for the record? Phil Winzowski. Spell your last name? W-E-N-Z-O-F-S-K-Y. And your relation to the property? I'm her uh, contractor. Uh, thank you, sir. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits the village would like to enter to the record. Do you have any objection to those documents? It's a notice document for tonight's hearing. No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. So you have service via signed green card, so we can proceed. All right, so we had a permit at one time. It elapsed. We sent it out in December to get code enforcement to try to chase the people down to make it relapse. And I guess you've already done the door, sir, or no? I, I was in there today. I talked to Stephanie. I saw Hunter today. I renewed the uh, permit. Well, I paid for the renewal. It'll be a couple of days before I get the paperwork. Also filed the notice of commencement and, and dropped that off uh, with Stephanie. And it's been notated on the, uh, on the computer. And as soon as it comes through, I'll call in for the final. I didn't realize that the permit expired. I have my copy, but it doesn't say on the front that the date it expired. Yeah, and that's, okay. that's on me. That's not. Yeah, that's like a calendar thing. It's like 180 days or six months, which is what, 182.5 or something? Close. Whatever. Yes. Something around there. All right. So what, what dates were you suggesting for this, this one? The same anyway? compliance by 427 or 510 fine hearing or $25 a day. It doesn't sound like those will be necessary. No, it's not going to be necessary. But do one, do Hunter one last favor when you get it issued. 
give her a call just so she can make sure that there's a check mark that it's done. Yeah, soon, yeah as soon as um, as I, soon I don't as, know that the building people and the code enforcement people go to lunch a lot. So. No, it's not going to slide. As yeah. soon as as soon as the the office is able to get to that and process it, I'll call it in. Yeah, the final. You just you've already done the work, I assume. Yeah. So yeah. you just need an inspection. And actually, I went in today to, you know, I dropped off the NOC notice of commencement, NOC. thinking that's all I need. NOC. That's thinking that's all I needed. And then Stephanie said, "Uh, your permit's expired." Ah, uh, well, maybe not. Maybe need something else. Then. So. Okay, great. So you get it. Well, she'll get an order in the mail. But okay. you know, you have until August twenty, August or April twenty seventh. Yeah. As soon as as soon as uh, as soon as I get it, I'll call in for final. Two or three weeks or the same thing I need. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Next, page five, twenty-two dash eighteen twenty three fifteen Sandpaper Avenue, Richard L. Grill. Code sections 14-2, 2318B2, miscellaneous items being kept on driveway and yard, restricted trailer, not screened from public view. I observe this violation on 11-22-22, send out notice of violation certified mail on 11-23-22, posted that to the property, send out notice of hearing on 120-23, and I was signed for on 124-23. Like tender those following documents into evidence, Exhibit 1, Notice of violation, affidavit of service, exhibit two, notice of hearing, exhibit three, verification ownership, exhibit four, pictures. Okay. Your name, sir, for the record? Richard Grill. Thank you, sir. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? No. Thank you, sir. Okay. So they're saying they're miscellaneous items being kept in the driveway and a restricted trailer. I guess those are bounce housey kind of things. Correct. I read somewhere brownies bounce houses or something like that. Um, so what can he do to make that not a problem? Is he doing it now? Has he put it behind a fence? or He is trying. We did speak, I believe it was yesterday. Um, the trailer still needs, the trailer camp now it's in the backyard. So he needs to move it up and he's going to screen it from view or park it in the garage. And he's done a lot better with not having the, the bounce houses laying all over the yard. So as long as he continues to do that and gets everything put away when he brings it home, he'll be fine. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure that by X date he can have he can have We closure. did talk, so he understands more now. All right, we're still on 427? 427, 510, 25, yes, sir. All right, so uh, keep in contact with Margaret and yes. make sure that whatever you've done is good enough so that we can have our bounce houses in peace? Yes. No problem. Okay. Right. 427 5, 10, 25 is granted. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Same page, 22 1865 165, Rivera Court, Connie L. and Kenneth T. Ingram. Code sections 1571 06 190 A1. Tree removed without a vegetation removal permit, and the roof is stained. I observe this violation on 12 13 22. Sent out a notice of violation certified mail on 12 21 22. It was signed for on 12 23 22. Sent out a notice of hearing certified mail on 120 23. It was picked up at 2 14 23. Like to know following documents into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. USPS tracking. Exhibit 3, verification ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. Exhibit 5, AS 400 permit information. Okay, Connie Ingram. Okay. So, those yes, documents, okay. before you go into the merits of it, those documents I handed you are the exhibits the village would like to enter into the record. Do you have any objection to those documents? No, Dennis Chalker. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Any uh, objection? I don't, I don't know what this is all about. It's the best. notice documents for tonight's hearing. I have all the other Sign green cards, your ownership docs, and a few pictures. And things. Pictures are up on the screen in the, at the top of the roof. And then the AS four hundred permit information. Yeah, I'm sure everything's fine. Okay. Good. All right, admitted without objection. So you didn't get a vegetative removal permit for that big old tree in the front yard that I did not I had no idea that that was something I was supposed to do. Yeah, they like to make sure that you have X number of trees in your yard for some reason. There are there are seven trees in my front yard Yeah, alone. but you're, you're going to have to apply and for I, a 
of went. vegetative removal permits yes, so sir. they can count them. Absolutely. And I, I went by and got the information because for most of the time I didn't even understand. I, I was like just baffled that I needed that. And then I went and talked with Stephanie, I believe it was, as well. Mm -hmm. And she gave me the paper stuff. And I had a problem with because I just did the front trees. And I'm at 24 trees within just my um, – between my for because of the cul-de-sac on my property is been there so, yeah so anyway I off. have a lot of trees Kyle is at Florida State do now. I have to do the shrubs is my question no probably not if you have 28 I'm, other trees there an issue with that. you probably it, it is that is a code requirement though so that's part of the evaluation that's done yeah so, yes. so you gotta do shrubs too okay I, I would be fast and loose with it though one five foot tall by whatever wide right. something or other they also sell these wonderful or have these wonderful plant ID apps that you can put on your phone that you can look at the leave and it'll tell you what the plan is and the lovely so scientific right. names of them all so you yeah. can fill it out. But exactly. you're going to have till the end of April to do this stuff anyway because we're yeah. doing 427, 512s for pretty much everyone. 510. 510, sorry. Mm -hmm. And that'll give you another chunk of time to get your trees ID'd. And what well, else do we have in here? My biggest problem and this is what I just found out, and I called today, I can actually submit this digitally. I didn't yes. know that. Oh, Matt, most people hate it. You're probably going to be no, I just had no idea. like it. No, you, you have to email it. It can't be done on our portal. Only uh, by email. email. Mm -hmm. I, I got the email. Yes, I found that out, and I have everything because my work hours conflict with their work hours. Right. So it just yes. wasn't working, and I just went, I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. Do I have to take a day off of work to submit this? And then re with regards to the roof, which is why I don't even need to talk about why we cut down the tree. And I'm very upset about it. You can't tell, but it does. It's the same. The tree was blocking, and so we have that issue. I have called and called and called, and finally, after calling this one guy, he tried. He put me on three different times. I called five people. They're so busy. I don't even understand this, but I'm not putting my husband up as he fell off the roof in 2017, and we have major issues. And obviously, I'm not getting up there. But anyways, there is a guy. We had longevity pressure washing coming on Saturday at 9 a.m. And he's also going to do my sidewalks as well. So well, and you heard my speech day. before. Give Margaret yeah. a call when it's done so you can say. Give who a call? That's what I wanted to ask. Margaret. Okay, Margaret. I surely will. Give Margaret Hancock a call, and she will go, yeah, that looks much better. And she'll give you your affidavit of compliance. And, and, you'll, have, and you'll have your sunlight, and the tree yes. won't be staining your house. And, and your my roof car's will be damaged. Clean. And the, the drainage that the village put in is completely blocked and clogged that there's nothing I could do. Yeah, well, That's all you issue. have to do or, uh, deal with right now is vegetation removal permit in the roof. So yeah. take those two steps and work your way through. Can I call on Saturday? Yes, you can. Oh, super. Super. That's so, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You get an order in the mail. Thank you. Thank you. Next is top of page six, 22-1889-474, Longbow Court, Trevor Fluke Family Trust. Code section 622-105.5, permit 220859 has expired. This was brought to my attention on 12-22-22, sent out notice of violation, certified mail on 12-27-22, posted it to the property, sent out notice of hearing, certified mail on 2-8-23, and I got a green card on that. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one. Did I do it? I didn't. <laughs> Exhibit one, notice of violation. Exhibit two, notice of hearing. Exhibit three, verification ownership. Exhibit four, pictures. Exhibit five, AS400 permit information. I've got this long way here. Yeah, you have uh, affidavits of service, so you posted oh. it. I'm giving you back. Your name for the record, ma'am? Amy Carbone. And your relation to the trust? I, I'm the realtor. I'm the listing agent of this property. Uh, I also so live in the community in the same court. Okay, good. Amy, could you spell your last name for us, please? C-A-R-B-O-N-E. Okay, thank you very much. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? It's the notice documents for tonight. The photos are... I don't no think they're objections. Photos, no okay. objections. Thank you, ma'am. No. Okay. What, what's... What was the permit for? 
Interesting. Yeah, cool. I've spoke with Miss Carbone. They have applied for the renewal. They just don't have it yet. Okay, so they should have no problem getting it by the 27th of April because I see they permit extension received, email for payment, building. So they have they submitted payment or you guys submit your payment? I believe they so. They paid already? Yes. Okay, so you'll. You'll have you'll have enough, or your clients will have enough time to get the permit issued, reissued, and make it all good. I, I appreciate that, but I have a question. I have a couple of questions. How can I expedite this situation? Because the closing was supposed to take place this Monday. Um, yeah, and we can't close with an open permit. And the owner had been in and out of the hospital, and then he died. And the successor trustee um, lives in Key West. And I jumped in when, as a neighbor, I saw a piece of paper hanging on the door. Hence, I'm here. So, and um, I'll do anything to make this go away as quickly as possible. Um, it's possible that it's already approved. I can't tell here. But if it is approved then they would be able to call for inspection on okay. Friday. Who, who does the calling? Does the service experts, um, the contractor? If the work's done, complete, it's done, then the homeowner can call in an inspection. Can, may I call it in on behalf of the homeowner? Yeah, anybody can call for an inspection. If okay, so done. I have spoken with Ms. Hancock before. Do I call her for um, an inspection? And who do I contact? So you'd be calling yeah, the building me. official. Let me give you the... my card because I work in both sure. building in, so I'll be able to do that. May I come over and get it? Sure. Okay. Come on down. And when the inspection is called in, someone needs to be at the home. The uh, building inspector needs access. Okay, so yeah, someone needs to let them in so they can they, they can check the outside AC stuff, but they got to go inside and turn it on. Just give me a call in the morning so I can check to see if it was approved. It should be because it, they submitted it on the 2nd, so. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. So someone will be getting an order saying 427, 510, or 25. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully Thank you, you'll be able to get your closing rescheduled for a week from now when everything's done, if we're lucky. Yes. Thank you. Next is 22-1916-149. Valeza Terrace, Leah Clytus, and Joseph Mangadis. Code section is 622-108.4, pavers in a pergola without a permit. I observe this violation on 1227-22, sent out a notice of violation certified mail on 1229-22. It was delivered on 1231-22, sent out a notice of hearing certified mail on 2823, and that was delivered on 2113, or 21023, sorry. Like that, notice following documents into evidence, Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 3, Verification Ownership, Exhibit 4, Pictures, Exhibit 5, AS400, Permit Information. Okay. You have service be assigned green cards. Could you tell us your name, sir? Is it? Your name? My name is Memphis Joseph. Okay. What was your name, sir? Is that your last name? Is your first? I My think last name is Joseph. My first okay, name very good. Is, yeah. Thank you, sir. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? They're the notice documents for tonight's no. hearing. Photos are on the TV screen up there. and um, Verification mm -hmm. of ownership. No objection. Thank you, sir. All right. Admitted without objection. The village has this thing with impervious surfaces. And impervious surfaces are like parking lots where, you know, you have to uh, let the water run through somewhere and you can only have so much of your lot paved. And they need to be able to check that out with your pavers and other things I've seen to make sure that you don't go over. Is that pretty much it? And the pergola needs to be engineered somehow or at least, yeah, that's going to be the hard one. Has to meet the building code. Yeah, the... The pavers aren't going to be as big a problem. You're going to have to get your surveyor to add that 
detail to your purchase survey and so they can tell how much you know is actually impervious or blocked from drainage it probably won't be a problem if you can get the calculation the bigger problem is going to be your sunshade there because you're going to need to find someone who will give some engineering detail to say it's good enough for a hurricane and I don't know who or how or what that will be so that's going to be your bigger issue um, so those are the two things you need to deal with in order to get yourself out of code enforcement problems so you're going to probably have to get another survey do you understand what I'm saying about this yeah I do okay good yeah because your survey will show you the house footprint any slabs the driveways and the surveyor can calculate the amount of impervious surface and what you have here are X number of um, pavers, I, I will call them, or, or what are they? Yeah, survey. He was actually in yesterday. So, so we're and, and I get, and, and if I were looking at this, I would only count the actual surface of the red pavers down there because the gravel in between still lets things through. So literally they'll be counting the, the number of pavers and the square footage of those to see if they violated then the engineering question. Do you know any any engineers? Because that's the only thing that's going to be a pain. Uh, if I may, I have to say something because uh, I didn't know. I know your guys is different with the community. I don't know if I, I didn't know if I need a permit because I yeah. go to the association. They approve it. They come. They approve everything. They never told told us like we need a permit. No, the association is looking out for themselves only. So they don't care what. It's wrong. Yeah. They, well, they don't. It's wrong. They, they don't care about whether it's permitted, unpermitted. All they care about is whether it looks good to them as an association. The village is looking at something else. They're looking at, we don't want, we want drainage to work in town. And in order for drainage to work, everyone can't pave their entire yards. And that's the rule for the village. And that's what you're going to have to comply with. And like I said, it'll probably be easy to keep your pavers, but it's going to be more difficult for you to figure out how to deal with the engineering aspect of your, and I don't even consider that a pergola, that's more like four by four sticking up in the air. So, but I don't, I'm not a building guy, so. That's why you need to see, either needs to apply for a permit and figure out how to get it approved or you can remove it, that's also yeah, an option. Those are, and if you, if you can, if the building department says, oh, we don't need it, that's fine, and if they do, you may just want to re remove it so you're not having an issue and then figure out how to get it engineered properly. Because the, the reason why I did it is because my next my next neighbor have the same thing. Yeah, the so the problem him, is your next thing. neighbor probably isn't permitted either. I mean, I can almost guarantee it. And, and they're not looking to go. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna go get your neighbor too. And normally, I don't want that too. <laughs> That's no, not what I want. Yeah, and, and no, and, <laughs> and unfortunately, someone may have said, "Oh, look at him. He just put up some stuff." Many people when they got the same thing, but well, I, I'm not. So I'm not, I just. You know, you're going to be fine probably with the pavers as long as you both keep going with the survey. That'll give you a calculation for impervious surface. Um, and all I'm telling you is you may need to remove the 4 by 4s for a little while until you can figure out someone to give you an engineering opinion to say they will not blow away in a hurricane. And we're asking that you do all that by April 27th or the 510 fine assessment hearing or $25 a day fine. Okay, so you just, you, you may want to make sure, well, you want to make sure that the paver issue is done by April 27th and that if you don't have anything going with the pergola part, you remove those, but you're going to call Margaret to come out and inspect it before the 27th so you don't get any fines running. Okay. April 27th? April 27th is your last day. Uh, the, like I said, the pavers, once your surveyor finishes the calculations, that's a nothing. They're just going to say it's X, X number or X percentage, and it either violates or it doesn't violate. And odds are it won't violate. So, yeah, it's not a big deal. So that's the only deadline I can have, April 27? I can yeah. have more than that? Well, I'm, I'm going to keep you to that just because I but don't know. We that. really try. We, we spoke to people like uh, in the office like several times because we own condo. We never own like a house before, so we don't know how this thing go, and uh, we really try to get this thing done. So okay, 
And this village. was cited in December, so we're three months in already. Yeah. So the village is not going, now. Nah, let it go. No, they they want it by, done by the 27th. If you come in here again, you know, and you've got the pavers all done, and you remind me that you were here, I'll probably bump you some more, but we're going to see. If you can't get it done by the 27th, the easiest thing for you to do is pull those 4 by 4s just give her a call, and, and then you'll stop any fine from starting, and then you can do it at your leisure because it won't be a problem. Okay. 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 If you can get it done beforehand, you can apply for the permit. You know, that'll be great. But if you okay. can't, and I, you know, the whole thing is everyone's really busy these days, so trying to find an engineer, a structural engineer, who will give you an opinion for four posts is going to be a difficult assignment. Okay. Okay. So 427, 510, 25 is great. Thank you. Thank you. Bottom of the page, 22-1320-501 North State Road 7, 511 SR7 Owner LLC. Hello. How are you? The code section is 622-105.5. Description building permit expired. This violation was written on 726-22. It was sent certified mail. 72722. It had to be remailed on 10 2022 due to a change of ownership and was signed for on 10 2222. Notice of hearing was mailed 216 23 and it was signed for on 218 23. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence Exhibit 1 Notice of Violation, Exhibit 2 Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 3 Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 4 Permit Information. Okay. Sprinklers. It's all about sprinklers. Fire. Yes. Oh, real fire sprinklers. sprinklers. Fire sprinklers, not yeah. real not sprinklers. crappy lawn sprinklers, but actually save your life fire sprinklers. Yeah. yeah. Commercial asset. Yeah. Okay. And you are going to tell us who you are, ma'am. Sure. I'm Tiffany Gonzalez. I'm the property manager of um, this facility, and I started managing it January 3rd, 2023. So, not your fault. Uh, no, no, not necessarily. So <laughs> you inherited this. I've so. inherited this. Um, dealing with Hobby Lobby, it's actually their open permit, and they've reached out to Pi Barker, who had opened the permit, and they're trying to get it resolved. I've been in communication with Linda Walker about this. Mm -hmm. um, that one? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, face with the names. All right, so, yeah, they just have to renew the permit and then get it done. Can we right? get the documents in as well? Yeah. And did documents. you find service on this one? I didn't hear yeah, service. Yeah, I found service via USPS Tracking Control and Enforcement. Thank you. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits we'd like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? They're the notice documents for tonight's hearing, the village's permit information, and verification of ownership. I'm really not sure um, what this Miami address is, where the certified went. Um, but it's the address on the tax collector's role, so. It may be the owner's then. You, you need to check that out. Well, um, the first one was Royal Center, and that went to Miami. And then the second one was 110 Washington Avenue. That also is in Miami. I'll but find out. That's the, for 511 SR7. Is that the one you're questioning? That's the yeah. owner. Okay, yeah, the first one I didn't know, and that was yeah, probably I think back there was in July. The, yeah, that was the original owner, but you guys had changed ownership. Right. But Papa hadn't updated yet. Understood. So then I re mailed it yeah. out but that's why you got a notice that was backdated or that had an old date on it because it originally went to the original owner so it got to me two weeks ago and i'm on it no, <laughs> i'm no, working no, with hobby lobby to get this resolved that's and okay we're, we're on the end of april kind of time frame so as okay. long as hobby lobby can get their vendor to reapply for the permit and pay the fee they should be fine as long as they can get it get it done by the so end. So that was the question Pi Barker was coming back at me. Is that what they need to do? They need to open the permit again? Have yep. an inspection and close it out? Exactly. Yes, so uh, open to. permit by paying an extension fee and then inspection and they're done. What was the permit for originally? Fire sprinklers. But what what about the fire sprinkler? What were they trying to install on the sprinkler system? No to, clue. To, I don't have that information. We're having a little difficulty with Pi Barker. Kid. There's hundred of them. They're saying the sconces, the sconces on them need to be replaced. Said sprinkler heads. Okay. So if Pi Barker cannot resolve this, can we go through another vendor to reopen? You, you have to get it? a change of contractor for me. Yeah, in. you would have to do a change of contractor. But Pi Barker was also emailing. And as of this week, information. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
So she yeah, so a... I changed out all the sprinkler heads, and okay. in order to make sure that they're viable and functional, they needed to get them inspected, sure. and that's what the issue is. I think you're. Um, one last question. I have other violations to discuss. They're on page eight. Do I need to wait again? Or? Yeah, I think so. You're a, you're a reduction or no? No, no it's no. A vi another violation. Oh, another violation. Let's see if you want to get through that one. And um, send the lady home. For the record, special measure, we were asking for earlier dates, but you said four twenty-seven, five ten, and a fifty-dollar day fine. Oh, fifty one. is commercial. We can deal with that. Four twenty-seven, five ten, fifty. It's also a health safety thing, so. Don't want Hobby Lobby burning up. Probably got some incendiary stuff in there. And then. All right, she is on page eight. Right, 23 0142 501 North State Road 7, 511 7, SR7 7 owner LLC. I'm sorry, I had a question regarding the last violation. Are you saying I'm going to be receiving violations of $50 a day or I have till the 27th? Uh, after the 27th, okay. it will start at $50 a day. So there's okay. you're a violation. The, the fine doesn't start until the date that you have the cure. Okay. Thank you. And here's your other one. I'll call it 11A. It's more inheritance. <laughs> That's okay. You know, you, you know, you wouldn't have anything to do if you didn't inherit that it. And fine, you yeah. push it off on um, the people before you. 13? Uh, no, I'm taking care of everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So on the next case, I would like to, it's 2349A14. Parking lot and disrepair, potholes, and striping faded. So this violation was mailed certified mail 11-30-22. It was signed for on 12-2-22. Or 12 -22. Notice of hearing was mailed on 2-16-23 and signed for on 2-18-23. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 4, Pictures. Was this put on before? No, but I mean the, the thing on the PowerPoint because my pictures are blank anyway. I did my pictures at like two o'clock this afternoon. Mm. Did it look good? It did. Of course. Well, just show the pictures. But I'm just fine. trying to figure out because I didn't. This is coming from the server. If it's coming from the server, it should be. Somewhere. It should no. It should be accurate. It doesn't matter who's looking. It's a live thought folder. I don't understand that. Well, computers, aren't they fun? So, um, I guess don't show me Doug and then I'll get them from Doug and then bring them to, to her. her. Yeah. Did you give her the second packet? Show, show her first and just bring them back. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So none of my pictures are going to be on there. But that doesn't make any sense. Sure. Yes. You put it here first. Okay. No, it's, here. it's here, maybe. No, he found it. It's, he opened the file, and it wasn't refreshed. Okay. Yeah. Here, yeah. it'll be on there. So that second packet I handed you, or again, the exhibits that we'd like to enter into the record, do you have any objection to those documents? I don't. Thank you. At the same center, I take it? Yes, sir. More towards the eastern end or no? The it's northern kind of end. It's kind of true, wow, the striping is kind of faded. Yeah, I'm just looking really at, faded. I'm um, looking at the, worst, like the worst one. I'm sorry? I was looking at the worst picture with the, with the cones. cones and that's all that. That's PetSmart and the ADA uh, That's salt? Okay, so that's the, sure. the um, north side of the property and the Hobby Lobby is on the south side of the property. And I know these things because I'm You have layers of the parking lot coming up before. It looks like you've gone in and patched it or something. There Temporary was, patches. Yeah. We were in permitting uh, for uh, asphalt repair and seal coat and stripe. Uh, the permit just was recently approved, and 
we paid a deposit of $29,000 to driveway maintenance, and asphalt repairs are going to commence on the 13th of March. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so this is probably about a two-month project, though, um, just because we have to do it in phases. Right, because you have businesses. Um, we're good. Okay, so. When are they going to start? Pardon me? March when are 13th. they going to start? On March, March 13th. So on March 13th. In a, another week or so? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, they've put down a 29K deposit, so they're <laughs> serious. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, why don't we give us May, June okay. dates? Yeah, we're actually going to bump it a little bit more than that. Oh, well, there you go. June comply by June 9th or appearance at the June 14th hearing. 6 9 6 14 Or $50 day or fine. $50. There you go. You have some breathing room okay. on that Thank one. Thank you. Yeah, the, the first one, yeah. the first case you had is really just administratively renewing a permit. That's no biggie. Okay. This one is actually repairing. I was going to give you to May. They're giving you to June. I'm not going to object. They're giving you more time. So okay. and just you. for the Luck record. And, uh, we're trying to get it done before the rainy season. Just for the record, that B13 on your agenda, that's the parking lot, dark lighting, that's coming off. So oh, it's just 2349A14, which is what Supervisor Walker read into the record. So parking lot in disrepair, the dark and the lighting are gone. Oh, no, gosh. parking lot in disrepair stays. I mean, that's I what I'm we saying, knew that was resolved. We went ahead yeah, no, to no, do No, no, the parking LED lot retrofit. is extremely dark comes out. The parking lighting should be as required by code. Those come off, right? The only thing that stays on is 2349A14, which is parking lot and disrepair. Okay. She's answering the question by by being a politician. And that <coughs> like, was renewed because you had the other lighting that was working, Hobby Lobby's exterior lighting wasn't working as well. But I don't know that it's currently up to the lumens that it's supposed to be. So It is better than what it was. So, so ha have your lighting you guys check it out. probably need to continue through with your LED retrofit. So we are doing an LED retrofit. We just received permitting. Um, That's that, fine. But that the project's starting as well. But yeah. they. But what what we're saying is that that is no longer a concern right now. Okay. It's off the agenda. Perfect. So you're really dealing with the parking lot and disrepair thing. It's just while you're out there, you already got it going. So just just make sure they follow up. Okay. okay. All cool. right. All right, six nine six fourteen fifty is granted. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Okay, get back to page whatever we were on. Going back to page seven twenty twenty two dash eighteen fifteen nine 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 zero Belvedere Road Walmart Stores East LP. Well, so code description code sections are twenty three forty nine A six and 14, 6195 A, B, and C, and 15, 141. Descriptions are parking lot and disrepair. It needs repaving and striping, semi-trailers, parking overnight in the parking lot, buildings, it, building is stained, paint chipping, landscape, there's dead, dying, and or missing landscape. Garden screening is torn and missing. Um, there's pallets of cardboard, uh, plastic, and crates in the rear of the store. This violation was observed and written on 11-18-22. It was sent certified mail 11-21-22 and signed for on 11-29-22. Notice of hearing was mailed certified mail on 2-16-23 and it was signed for on 2-22-23. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, pictures. And a small amendment to I the record we're going to yep, change Tuan to town center and on this the is our next uh, yes sir we will fix that thank you yeah i'm just paying attention all right so someone actually has a nice stamp so you have signed green cards you have service your names for the record please uh, good evening special magistrate wes hevia um, outside land use council to walmart ackerman llp all right, all, stop, Wes, and spell your last name. Sure, H-E-V as in Victor, I-A. Okay, ask. Here I'm also go. joined by store lead Jean Florin, who's to my right. Spell his last name for us. I'm, I mispronounced it, so I'm going to actually allow him to introduce himself. Oh, F-L-E-U-R-I-N-E. F-L-E-U-R-I-N-E? -E. Yes. Thanks, Wes. 
Those documents, gentlemen, that I handed you are the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence. Any objection to those? So, Council, you mentioned you mentioned photos. I don't see photos. They're here. on the screen up so there. So you introduced one case, but those appear to be photos for the Yeah, those are photos from the other case. So we'll get back to the right one. Sorry about that. Wow, we got a pile of photos. Yeah. So Walmart actually was towing a semi out of there today. There's landscape trailer park there. Um, this is pallets. This is in the rear, but on the east side, there was all in the parking spaces and everything there. There were pallets, cardboard, crates, carts, all kinds of stuff there. Um, more pallets, cardboard from further away. This is inside the pen. This is where you're supposed to keep it, but they're supposed to be stacked on pallets and not like garbage and debris back there. Um, this is your paint chipping. It looks like they've been touching up paint on the east side of the building, but this is all on the back side. This is a U-Haul that's just parked in the parking lot. So this is throughout the parking lot. The parking lot is pitted, and it holds water. I'm not even sure if water isn't seeping up from something, um, but this is throughout the parking lot. And this was just on a couple of rows that I took pictures of. Um, and like all this used to be marked out. I don't know if you can see what I'm pointing at here. This was all a crosswalk. It's all faded, gone away. Um, this is more pitting on the drive, the main drive in. This is, there's no screening here at all. It's gone. You have one over on this side that's torn. It looks like the ones up front were were fixed, the ones facing north. Um, your stop was missing. Oh, where's the dead tree? You have multiple dead trees. Here's one right in front of the garden center. It's always a great advertisement for the garden center. But there's multiple dead plants. And honestly, that just came into compliance for landscape issues. Um, you have a very large lean from before. I think it's a 2016 or 2017 case um, that actually just came into compliance last year. So the fine ran for five years. Um, and uh, our arborist is supposed to be doing a quarterly inspection out there, but it's it's not working here. So, so for, for the record, uh, no objection. Thank you, entering sir. those photos and, and this information for case just to clarify 22 18 15 there's another one which I suppose we'll deal with afterwards yes, yes. Sir. we'll do them in one at a time please thank you great so um, with the special magistrate's permission I'd like to just walk through each one of these issues provide an update I know there's a lot to unpack here there's a lot under a single violation go ahead okay thank you sir and um, I also want to mention that I'm gonna for the sake of brevity I'm just gonna go through the updates I had a you know, series of calls with our collective team over the last couple of days. Um, but we also have uh, Jean here who can testify if your honor has any questions, but I will just go through um, my notes quickly uh, just for the sake of brevity. So as to uh, the parking lot sub issue, the striping and the repaving, um, Walmart agrees and has been budgeting an item. It's several hundred thousand dollars to restripe and repave the, the parking lot that has been approved. It's going to be a substantial project. It's going to take some time. Um, the latest feedback I have is that it's about probably two weeks to get started and then through phasing, you know, several more weeks at least to get completed. It's going to be longer than that. They need an um, engineering permit. I did not even realize that, Ms. Walker, so I will be yeah. in touch with you after this to ensure that they permit things correctly. Yeah. Um, and Jean, feel free to chime in if you you uh, have additional information on that. I'll, I'll move along to the other issue, which is the overnight parking um, of semi-truck and trailers. I know some images were shown uh, during the day. Uh, I don't doubt that uh, there, there may be some overnight parking there. It's, a, it's an issue with most of our stores. At this particular store, the policy is to tag a vehicle if it's suspected of parking overnight. It's a form of notice, and then the tow occurs the subsequent day. This is also a bit of a tricky issue and we would again really appreciate the opportunity to sit down with perhaps council but certainly uh, Ms. Walker to discuss 
how we should handle this because it's also a law enforcement issue if folks are actually in the vehicles. Um, that's something that we need to collaborate on, I think. Law enforcement has been out there. Um, on this case, it's not on, on here because it had complied because PBSO did chase them out. You had someone living in the parking lot. They had set up a table, a stove. They were cooking there. They were very comfortable living in the parking lot well, and had been there. And everything yes, they need. it was a pickup truck with a camper top. It was parked on the northeast end, uh, kind of by the Bennett Auto that's there. Yeah, they were very comfortable. So this is a, a great example of how we need to have a meeting with the city staff. There's new. There's a new store manager for the store. There is a new store lead for the store. There is also a new regional manager for this district, and we would very much appreciate, as I mentioned before this, the opportunity to sit down with you and hammer out all of these issues mm -hmm. and come up with a joint strategy because it's obviously in everybody's best interest to make sure something like what you just described does not happen. It's not going on, correct. Right. Um, so uh, I'd like to table that issue. It seems like it's it's something that can be dealt with. Um, I don't know if there's a particular timeline on that because it's sort of whack-a-mole a bit. Um, but building exterior, chipping and painting, you showed an image. I just drove the site uh, today. And it, it has been pressure cleaned in anticipation of painting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they had started some of the painting on 3.6, and it's scheduled to complete on 3.14. Um, so that is, we agree with you there, and we're working to, to address that. It shouldn't be too difficult to, to finish that up um, mm -hmm. in short order. So with regard to the landscaping, um, I understand that our Walmart's um, local landscaping team actually walked the site on 228 with somebody from the city to identify a remedial scope. I understand that that scope is, um, has been discussed verbally but hasn't been confirmed in writing. And my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is that Walmart is just waiting to get that scope X's and O's so they can do the work. And, and Who did they walk with? That I don't know. I'm the code officer. Actually, they specifically mentioned it wasn't you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so um, code enforcement would be the people from the city that would be walking the property, and I am the commercial inspector. So I don't know who they met with. Yeah. Do you happen to know? No, we're Sorry. working on that. We're trying to figure it out because we basically I'm new. I'm trying to figure out all this piece. Mm -hmm. So I can get so that done. To the extent that there's a disconnect there, and I don't have the most updated information, again, I think this would fall into the category of let's get a meeting and let's walk and let's get everybody um, there. But my the what was reported to me before this hearing is that there was a walk schedule for the 28th. And it was with Nunez Landscaping, who is the landscaper in charge of doing remedial landscaping work at this property. Okay. So we need to talk after this, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Um, garden center. So this specifically deals with the screening, I mm -hmm. believe, at, at the garden center. So uh, I believe some of that which was damaged has been removed. I believe you may have pointed some of those removals out in your imagery. They have ordered uh, replacement screening, but it's on back order for several weeks. That is the latest information I have on that particular yeah. item. Mm -hmm. You're right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then in the rear of store, pallets and cardboard. You had pointed out the cage, I think you saw in one of those images, which is, as you said, where the pallets should be, right? Correct. So from the way it was explained to me is that uh, they call a service to remove the pallets, right? And they open the gates for a period of time, and sometimes they even bring the pallets out. So there may be times where there are pallets sitting outside of the, of the, ga of the gate, which is improper. And, uh -huh. so, and so if I may, uh, the solution that was suggested to me, which again, we'd love to s discuss with you, is um, to just call for more frequent pickups so they're not just sitting outside of those gates. Yeah, I have no doubt that they're sitting outside the, the, the gated area. That's what, you know, I cited. So this particular enclosure mm -hmm. was built to keep the pallets from being in the back. This was an add-on to the store after the store was built because Walmart didn't seem to, to know that that was going to be a problem. Um, and they added it in there. The problem is, is they don't go in there. So this is pretty much empty. Um, and there's pallets along the back and on the side. They're all along the receiving side over there and in parking spaces over there as of today. 
um, if you don't mind me saying, because when I first start, uh, I've been there for one week. I start last Monday. Okay. So that's the first thing I realized. So it was a, uh, for previous management, they have a lock inside the gate for theft. You know, people usually come and steal those belts. So they put a lock on it, and then when they come for actual pickup, if there's no manager right now around, they've left it and picked them up. So, what so they're worried them. about the theft out of the gate, so they just leave them outside so they can... So stolen steal it. without having to go behind <laughs> what, the gate. What happened is like that's, the, that's the, about as logical place, as nothing. Yeah, the place we used to put the gate gets so over full. That's what happened. And then now there's no others. They don't have no space to put more. Right. So they have to leave it outside. So the first day I got here, me and the store manager, we discussed it. Then I called for a pickup for three days in a row, which is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So if we can get them out, then going forward. Everything has to go. Well, you're going you're gonna to get some well, you'll time. Well, you have time to correct, mm -hmm. but it's a problem, and they, they leave them out. So th they were in parking spaces and in the drive aisle, you know, on the east side towards the, it's really kind of like the southeast side, where is if you're coming from the back or you're coming off of Fairgrounds Road, Process Drive, Wiseman Way, whatever it's called now, mm -hmm. when you come in there, it's kind of blind there. And if a car was coming in as one was trying to come out, there was not enough room okay. because all of the pallets, crates, the carts, mm -hmm. and everything were there where they're not supposed to be. Which is exactly so, where I drive into that Walmart that I use because I live in this neighborhood. Right. So, so yeah. on, on top of that, it must have been a busy pickup day because you even had the little things that you pull with the pickup, mm -hmm. the blue pickup bins. Those were even sitting out. But that was up towards the north end, on the east side, but towards the north end. <coughs> so, uh, Special Magistrate, um, you know, obviously all of these items are grouped under a single violation. And I suspect, um, you know, based on the information that we've shared, um, and especially if we're able to have a subsequent conversation with code staff, specifically Ms. Walker, um, I think a lot of these could be resolved in the next couple weeks. The one that, that bugs me is the striping and the, and the paving of the parking lot. And since these are all traveling together, I don't know what, what staff's recommendation would be. Um, but clearly we, we would request as, as much time as we can have to address that particular issue. So they just need the permit. They need the permit. The, the restriping the Paving and restriping. Yeah, so once you get the mm -hmm. permit, it, you can take your 180 days to finish mm -hmm. the project. You can extend it by buying an extension. I don't uh, know that uh, engineering permits can be extended. Okay, well, never mind. So I don't want to say that. All right, well, you have 180 days to do the work, which should be sufficient if you can get it permitted. And then, so what is the time frame we're looking for permitting? Is we were asking June? for the 427, 510. 427 is never going to fly with these Wally people. They're, they're, well, I mean, they're going to at least need May. I mean, you know, they got to get an engineer. God willing knows. They don't need an engineer. Well, they need an engineer. They need target. a paving contractor that submits the plan that's already there. They can't change anything. Mm -hmm. okay. You can't change anything without going through it's a site, site plan. plan. Right, right. And actually, part of your previous violation that's still running is all the markings that you have for pickup because none of your pickup spaces have been approved. They're not supposed to be there, and none of the markings on the pavement is supposed to be there. And that violation was brought to my attention also today in conversation, uh -huh. so I think, again, another opportunity for us yeah. to speak and try but to... But that's a previous violation, and that'll be something that it should not be in this paving plan and it'll get you partly out of violation with that, and then you'll have to go through some kind of site plan. And I, and I see your point, because tying the paving up with the site plan approval would only cause more delay. That's correct. Right. So um, I, 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 if, if it's as simple as an engineering plan, I think we could probably have that within 60 days. Um, well, you can't create a new engineering plan. You're going to yeah, you you're gonna use you the engineering plan, plan that's already approved. I apologize. I thought you said we needed an, to submit an engineering plan in order to get a permit for the restriping and the paving. You're going to submit the engineering plan that's already approved. Oh, okay. You're going to submit a copy of that and say, this is what I'm redoing. Okay. 
Yeah, because you can't really change anything. You have to leave your parking spaces the same, everything the same. The only thing that they'll um, allow you to change is if there's a, an upgrade to ADA. So if you have to have two passes, they're going to make you mark that out. So, but other than that, there's nothing new that you have to have okay. done. So they really just need permits. Mm -hmm. And they already have an approved site plan, so they just have to attach it to whatever. Correct. All right, so we're still looking at 427 then? Is that what you want? 510 or $50 a day fine. Okay. And you, you're, you're uh, sorry, I have to say, Mr. Special Magistrate, um, could you just, what is the 510 date in this? That's order? the actual hearing date. For, for the sort for, of, for May. That's the fine assessment hearing date. So fine if you don't comply by April 27th, you'll be set for fine assessment hearing on on May 10th. Very well. Thank you. <clears throat> All set with that one, Special Magistrate? Yep. All right. We'll go to 5, the... 10, 50 is granted. We'll go. They have another case on page 8, case 23-0142, 501 North State Road 7, 50... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm reading yeah. the wrong one. 23-0181-9990, Belvedere Road, Walmart Stores, East LP. Okay. Yep. Code section 622-105.5, 108.4, and 1116. The description permit number 221702 for the overhead roll-up door is expired. Electrical work that was associated with the door was done without a permit. And emergency exit signs for... Or were removed. Um, this violation was written on 216.23 and sent certified mail on 216.23. It was returned signed on 222.23. Notice of hearing was mailed certified mail 227.23 and it was signed for on 33.23. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. Exhibit 4, Pictures. And I should have permit information, which would be Exhibit 5. It was in there. It was in, the last one. in his packet. I need to give that to Doug once it's done. I only had one copy. All right. <clears throat> Signed green card equal service. Oh, you want to see the pictures? If you don't mind, just very quickly. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I'll let um, Inspector Campbell testify to the roll-up doors. So what happened was the doors came in and the doors themselves got a permit. The permit was never routed through Fire Rescue. Fire Rescue needs to look at the permit. And partly because exit signs were removed for these to go in. And um, then they did electrical work because they're evidently they run on electric and that was never permitted. So um, we'll let Inspector Campbell testify, but they're going to have to do a revision on the permit, renew the permit, and it'll be routed through fire rescue to see if they'll approve it. Hi. Hi. Good evening. <clears throat> so we uh, responded February no, first, 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 tell us who you are. Oh, Inspector Campbell from Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Now you go. And so we responded February 15th, 2021 is when this all started. Um, so this is a couple years old. We uh, were notified that a lot of the Walmarts in Palm Beach County had installed these roll-up doors. So we all went out and did all our annual inspections, and we found that they did install them without a permit. And that's pretty much it. We're still waiting for permitting two years later. <clears throat> Cindy Campbell. All right, do you have any questions of the PBFR representative, Ms. Campbell? Uh, yes, just to clarify, again, Wes Evia for the record on behalf of Walmart. Um, just to clarify, my understanding is that the village did issue a permit for the doors, but it was never routed to county fire That's rescue. correct. We are the ones who wrote the notice of violation in February of 2021. And you're, you're with county? That's correct. Okay, got it. So it sounds like this needs to be routed through you. The consultants need to talk. There needs to be comments, responses, and we can see we can get these permitted. Is that so? If it's my understanding, the the permit's expired. So whenever they go to renew the permit, they're going to route it through fire through the proper process. So the other thing that was mentioned, and 
I'm just I'm, I'm coming up to speed on this one as well is that it's going back to 2021 I'm seeing this violation was issued about three weeks ago that is your notice of violation from the code enforcement aspect but from fire but from the fire rescue it was initiated on February 15th of 2021 so fire rescue is not going to find you but the village will is I basically just, the bottom line of that one so after a case does not get resolved or we do not get compliance on the fire side we utilize the municipality's code enforcement uh, procedures and magistrate for us to try our cases so basically they do all of the administrative things for us and we come and try our own cases so in order to do that they do all of the uh, due process with the posting of the notice of violation giving you more compliance date and then let you know doing all the administrative processing so well, you've yeah. gotten a free two years yeah, it, it makes sense. I, I just wasn't aware that there was a sub process here. I'm coming up to speed and all I see is three weeks after the notice, there's a hearing and I, I'm trying to understand what the yeah. fact pattern is here even. So clearly it, your instruction to us is renew the permit, make sure it's properly routed and go through your department to ensure that everything. Well, they'll send it to their department now because right. okay. they know aware. that they need to get it there. So if you have your contractor actually contact me, then we can have them come in. They're going to open a revision, and the revision will be routed through fire rescue. If that revision is approved, then they're going to renew the permit and get the final inspection. Got it. And they're going to have to add their electric work to the permit. That'll be part of the revision, as well as moving the exit signs, because you have to have those. Um, at all the exits so that'll all be part of the revision if it doesn't get approved then the doors are going to have to be removed and you're going to have to close the permit so I don't want to see you guys go to the expense of renewing the permit if we don't know if fire rescue is going to approve it or not so you open the revision first uh, I took notes on that and I will relay that to the to the consultants I know that they're well aware of this issue and there is a lot of email traffic on my end about this and yeah thank you for that for that guidance um, the only other thing I'd note just for the special magistrates benefit and and others is that these doors are only utilize these roll down portion of the doors are only utilized in extremely rare events specifically hurricanes when nobody is in the building and it's very rare that nobody would be in the building mm -hmm. and not they, to diminish they should have been permitted because not to they diminish, have electrical they motors be, Yes, sir, and they have potential for fires yes, sir. and all that but stuff. And, you know, Royal Walmart. To diminish Walmart. the importance just as a, as, a, as so a side note. If they were attached on the outside, it wouldn't be, they would consider it a hurricane shutter. But because they're attached on the inside, it's not like that. Because this isn't, these shutters, as you're calling it, is not going to stop your doors from being broken or anything like that. It's more for rioting and that kind of stuff that happens. And, and I get that. I mean, I, I understand where they're coming from. But for fire rescue, they want to make sure that those doors can never come down as long as the building is occupied. And just because they say it won't doesn't mean it. And, and I wouldn't sit here today and tell <laughs> you that. Gonna happen. I, I am just an attorney. I defer to the expertise of, yeah. of the, the consultants and, and, of course, your your Okay, officials. so they need to renew their permit and we're Looking at 427.510 again? Yes, sir. Or $50 a day fine. Okay. So, you got some more? Is your contractor for this local? You paid that? Do you know who the contractor is for the road down there? Can you no, look at the contractor? Yet. No, they, don't, they have no clue. He's been there a week. 22.1702. Um, I, can, I can attempt to look that up in my emails right now. Please We're going to look it up. Okay. Door system, South Florida. They're out of Pompano. Yeah, they're local. So they, they should be able to submit the revision, but they need to contact me. Door systems of what? South Florida. South Florida. Door systems of South They're Florida. They're located in, in, Pompano in Pompano Beach. Pompano. It's it's in it's in the ether here. <laughs> but somewhere. Yeah. yeah. They're right. they're local. Okay. All right. So they just need to do that and when they're doing that they ought to put like the exit sign stuff up there too. Just so they can pass P D F R. Or they won't. Okay, thank you all very much. All Appreciate right. It. Thank you. Thank you. Someone will get some orders probably in Bentonville. Say again, sir. Someone will get some orders. It's probably going to be in Bentonville. It, Is that the? It, it will start there. Yeah, <laughs> and it will eventually get back to you. Uh, or you can try to get Ms. Walker to uh, give you a copy if you contact her. I should have your email. We worked yeah. together last year, yeah. you said. 
Yes, ma'am. We worked together on that violation that I came in on and had been ongoing for, for some time. Yeah, so I should have your email. Uh, yeah, and I, I contacted you this morning as well, so I'll, I'll follow up. Okay. Thank you very much. Perfect. All right, great. All right, we still have a whole bunch of bodies in here, so. We're going back to page 7, 22-1840, 50 Crestwood, North, Crestwood Court North, Grandview at Crestwood Condominium Association, Inc. Code sections 9-1 and 622-108.4. This violation was mailed certified mail 12323, and it was returned on 12523. Notice of hearing was mailed 21623, and it was returned on 22123. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, SunBiz information. Exhibit 4, pictures and exhibit five, the Palm Beach County Fire Rescue Report. No objection. This is Scott Lee, the attorney for Grandview Crestwood Condominium Association. All right, Scott, just Lee, L-E? That's correct. And I have two gentlemen with me. I'll let them give their names and the spelling, uh, one of which is our property manager at the association and one of which is one of the members of the board of directors. Okay. For appearances, go ahead. Tell us who you are. Uh, John Anagnostopoulos, property manager. Oh, you are definitely going to spell that. Oh, definitely. I've been doing this all my life. Uh, A-N-A-G-N-O-S-T-O-P-O-U-L-O-S. I ran out of page. Me I had too. to go down <laughs> the side here. Michael Corelli. Uh, I'm one of the board members, one of the five board members. Spell your last name. C-A-R-E-L-L-I. I would have given you an extra R, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, board member. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so go ahead, Village. We got the. Um, go ahead. Director Cindy Campbell from Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Mm -hmm. So see, see, see. we initially were called out by operations. Uh, they had a delay in patient care because when they tried to make entry into the community, there were some new gates that were put up and they didn't have access. So this was cited on February 5th, 2020, pretty much before the world shut down. We revisited this violation on May 10th, 2021. Um, and that was the third inspection on the property for that violation and it still had not be, been resolved. Um, they installed a Knox key switch for us to have fire department access, but the permit for installing the gates and the permit for the NOx is something that we come out and actually do an inspection on that never occurred because the permit never happened. I, it is my understanding that there's, there's discrepancy on who is responsible for the permit, but they've kind of been going back and forth about it for a few years now as far as responsibility. So we're, we're three years into this now. So it's time this. for someone to be responsible is what you're saying. Yes, this is a unique situation. And, and we're not talking about a problem with the gate. We're, pro we're talking about a, a permit was not filed when this uh, gate was moved, and the association was not the party that uh, removed that moved the gate. Uh, this involved K. Hubnanian, the developer who built the adjacent uh, homeowner association, Park Central, uh, at Cypress Key. Uh, little history here, and when K. Hubnanian, the developer, was building that adjacent community, uh, they said, we need to relocate this gate and we're going to relocate it on your property, Grandview at Crestwood. And we said, fine. And the then council for Grandview at Crestwood uh, had a full-fledged agreement uh, drawn up between all the parties. And one of the key provisions in that agreement was that K. Abnanian and Park Central, the adjacent association, would be responsible for all permitting as it relates to the relocation of the gate. And there's uh, a specific set of language to that effect in this agreement. Uh, Apparently, I guess, Kevnanian and Park Central did not properly permit this installed gate. Uh, and despite various demands on the part of Grandview at Crestwood by letter, and now by litigation, we had to file suit against those two entities, the developer and Park Central, demanding that they permit the gate and demanding that they reimburse us for costs and expenses. To date, they have refused to do so, uh, although there's been back and forth quite a bit, and uh, Ms. Campbell and Ms. Walker have been graciously involved in many of those communications and been very responsive, and I appreciate it. 
Um, and there has been a bit of confusion, frankly, as to whether or not the permit, one permit is necessary or a second permit involving the electrical associated with the gate is necessary. I believe we have clarification at this point from, from Ms. Walker and Ms. Campbell that it's just one permit that is necessary. Uh, I've tried to uh, convince the other side, the Kevnanian folks, through their council and Park Central's attorney, that this is one permit that they needed to file for when they relocated the gate. And to that end, uh, we were seeking uh, assistance from Ms. Walker specifically and Ms. Campbell uh, to ex execute an affidavit uh, to that effect. I prepared that affidavit. They seem receptive to the idea because there was quite a bit of emails back and forth as to the one permit or the two permit requirement. They clarified it. However, the other side doesn't believe it until there's some type of attestation to that effect from code enforcement. And I provided that proposed affidavit to Ms. Walker for her review. I understand she needed counsel to review it, and that's still under review. Frankly, it's been a good number of weeks, but I understand there's a process as it relates to that affidavit. What that affidavit will end up doing is that will trigger KF Nanian uh, and the adjacent association to get their contractors out there just to go through the permitting process. Now, I understand, Mr. Magistrate, you, you may say, but this gate is on your property. It's your responsibility to permit it regardless of whatever contractual arrangement you have with third parties. Um, we have made yeoman efforts to get a contractor out there to do this permitting for us. No one wants to touch this. Uh, this is an installed gate with electrical, and we've called, I don't know, and our property manager, uh, John, can testify us to this, multiple contractors to just simply go through this permitting process. The developer is has the contractor ready to go, from what I understand, with the exception of understanding if there's one permit or two permits that are necessary. And that's where code comes in to help clarify this for us through the affidavit that I prepared. So that, that's where things stand on this kind of convoluted situation. <clears throat> no, nah, it's not very convoluted. I mean, I'm a litigator. I understand this stuff. I do land, land and dirt law. <laughs> you know? I do a lot of eminent domain. That's my faves. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll just try to see what the village wants to do with this because I'm looking at it going, yeah, that's a nice twist, but... Um, our attorney got us or got me the affidavit uh, yesterday. Okay. I think you might have sent it Monday. I was out on Monday. Um, I got that yesterday to be able to sign to give to you, but it is different. It basically tests if it's my affid. It's me saying that I wrote this violation. What you had in there was what Palm Beach County had done, and I can't attest to what they did and their okay. inspections. Um, it's it's they need a permit right. they had pulled a permit for the underground electric they need an above a permit for the gate right. and the above ground work that they did and the permits probably going to be somewhere around 150 bucks something like that so um it's kind of crazy that it's gone on for three years for that um you know can, but that's uh, that's can that's i ask where you we are if in the edits to the affidavit, does it make clear that only one permit is necessary for the relocation and the above ground electrical? Because that's the source of the confusion among the I other side. I believe we, we'll, we'll double check I that. I believe that that was put in um, Ms. Campbell's report. She told me that, and you have a copy of that there. I believe that was discussed in the meeting that I missed, yeah. where you told them that they needed one permit. Um, I believe that my violation says that they need a permit for the electrical work and the gate for that. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what they're doing and I can guarantee you that what they've spent fighting it is less than what the permit's going to be. <laughs> I completely I agree. 100%. I can tell you that what they spent fighting it is less than one third of an hour of what yes. these people's yeah. rate is. <laughs> No, and I'm not defending them at all because this should have been addressed years ago. Mm -hmm. But I, they're hanging their hat on, there were several emails that we all had uh, back and forth, which again, I appreciate your, your assistance. There was one email that and they're trying to 
interpret one of your emails in, in a manner that suggests that there's one permit for the relocation and one permit for the above ground electric, which they deem our responsibility, but that's not true as far as I understand it. It was just one permit that encompasses everything, and that would trigger their obligation to do it once and for all. So I'm hoping that the affidavit edits make reference to that. I don't know if this, I don't know at what time what information came in, but I had spoken to Cardinal Electric myself when I was calling contractors. There is an electrical separate permit required for the underground. So when I called the gentleman from Cardinal Electric, he flat out said, I don't want anything to do with this case anymore. The primary, the primary permit or the primary person who subcontracted his work wouldn't communicate with him. So he, on his own accord, as a you know reputable contractor, said, I'm going to permit my own work. So he came in and did his portion of the electrical. So there are different permits that are required for electrical, but he came in on his own accord and did that to get his name cleared from the case. That was the underground. That's evolution. correct. Right. right. So it's we just still have the relocation aspect of the permit and the above ground. And if that's all encompassed it's in, in, one. in one permit, then that... The other side, the other attorney said, then fine, we'll get our contractor out there. And so they're not accepting the emails ex exchanges that we've had, but the affidavit will do the trick. And, and if we could get that in short supply, that, in, in short order, then hopefully this will, will get taken care of by them. Although we're not going to rely on them. You know, I've instructed our property manager to do whatever is necessary to try and scour the earth for a contractor, but it's been incredibly difficult, Mr. Magistrate, to find a contractor that's willing to do this, to permit something that's been done by somebody else, ago. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But you all have, you know, all kinds of attorneys to work on this too. So <laughs> it's all good. Okay. What are the time frames? Uh, we're asking for compliance by 3.30 or appearance at the April 12th hearing or $25. That's a day probably time. way too soon. I'm, I'm looking more at the 427, 510 in order to get everything done to see whether your permit will get a, a appropriate response from the other side. But as you stated in your argument, you are the people who own the dirt where the thing is located. So you're the people who are going to get tagged if it is. And I hope your damages claim against Hoffmanian and folks includes, you know, any code enforcement violation fines. But I will do the 427, 510. So at least you have a little bit of time to work it out. And if it doesn't work out, I'm sure you'll be back. Thank you, Mr. Magistrate. Thank you. And Linda, don't send that up. Is that $50 a day? How many dollars a day? 25 sir. Eh, I'm going to do 50 just because it's a health safety thing. Maybe and that'll help. Mr. Magistrate, just to be, for my own clarification, edification, the fine does not kick in until, until after 428. If nothing is done by 428, then you have an issue. <coughs> okay. Uh, bodies. Now we're uh, moving to find mitigation hearings 19-0087, 121 Raven Court, Mergoleen F. Edwards Estate, and there's actually two, I can read both. 21-0184, yeah. 121 Raven Court, Mergoleen F. Edwards Estate. Site 10 are the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, find mitigation request, order assessing fine. Exhibit 2, Exhibit 3, Verification Ownership. Exhibit 4, Affidavit of Compliance. And ditto. Exhibit 1, Fine Mitigation Request. Exhibit 2, Order Assessing Fine. Exhibit 3, Verification Ownership. Exhibit 4, Affidavit of Compliance. Okay. He did both. I did, yeah. He read both. Your name, sir? James Le Johnson. Spell your first name, sir. A-I-N-S-L-E-Y. And your relation to the estate? And my mom, my mom, but she's but now deceased. Okay, thank you. And special magistrate for your notes, the first case, 19-0087, the fine amount is 24850 And in case 21-0184, the fine amount is $2,125. Okay. All right, so my question in all the fine mitigation cases is really easy. Why should the fine be reduced? I, I owned up um, was 
informed of the situation um, along the way when she died. And because she didn't make a will, and she, all of everything sort of um, out of place, I have to get attorneys for foreclosure and for um, probate wills and to add the matter result. And okay. This is actually still an active foreclosure that the village is a defendant. Well, it's, 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 it's sold, as I bring down to the show you It's sold when? It's going to be foreclosed, it's going to be um, closed uh, by, 13, uh, by Friday. Okay. 13th. Friday. Uh, on the 13th, it's going to be um, all concluded. It's going to be what? All matters will be sorted out with the, with the bank and the lawyers and everything's in the fund. Okay. So my point to the magistrate is that the village has incurred significant legal fees in following the foreclosure and, and maintaining the status of our liens. Um, I can give you our numbers. We would not be um, opposing reduction, but in the first case particularly where we've incurred um, significant legal costs, we would be amenable to reducing it to $9,269.26. Payable uh, 60 days is 5-8. And the second case... We'd be amenable to reducing it to twelve hundred dollars and fifty-five cents, payable by three eight. Excuse me, five eight. All right. So, what is the first one reduced to? What's the percentage? Sixty percent, seventy. It's not not a percentage. It's covering the legal costs. Yeah, it's costs. covering the yeah. cost of the foreclosure that you had to defend plus whatever. Okay. And what's happening on Friday? Um, there's a buyer in place. It's waiting on the title officer to, to uh, finish out the paperwork, send it over to the lawyers from there we can do the necessary signatures and um. All right, so you want some sort of numbers for the title company so they can close, I take it. Well, my, my realtor, she said she um, spoke with a um, title company. So um, when, when um, I was about to sort it out, um, everything will be done right there. Okay. All right, well, I'll go along with the village's recommendations. In case number 19-87, I will reduce the $24,850 fine to $9,000. $269.26 payable by May 8th. And on case number 21-184, I will reduce the $2,125 fine to $1,255 by 5-8. Thank you, sir. And you should be able to get that information to the realtor. Uh, you, you something. The last time I came here, you, you gave a much better fine than that. When I came here the last time. Yeah, and it didn't work, did it? No, I told that I would wait until this, 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 uh, everything is sold. The trouble is he's not done right, but he's the foreclosure. Yeah, the foreclosure kept going. Right. And they kept running up attorney's fees. There's still filings this week. And from there's that still case, so it's very stuff active, going still. on that they still have to deal with. And, you know, if we would have paid it off earlier, that might have helped. But right now you're still in foreclosure. So, so can I show you the document, sir? So the document is just if you have a hearing on Friday or if something happens. All right, purchase and sale agreement. All right, so you have a sales contract. I understand that. But it still doesn't resolve the foreclosure case, and it still doesn't resolve the fact that the attorneys had to work on the foreclosure case because they were named by the bank. And so they deserve to get paid for that. And unfortunately, these, as you know, these, these foreclosures can they go keep on going. and on and on, depending on what happens in the case. They, they can drag on for years. So... They will still continue to work, but I have given a, a couple of numbers that hopefully the title people can deal with. And these are recorded liens, so all that money is held in escrow anyway, so the money so, is yeah. there. Okay. So I will sign those two orders. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next is 15. 
fifteen dash twelve fifty six two forty six Natchez Court Harold Weinhofer or Hofer. He's the number the next three. Yeah, I'll read them all. Sixteen dash seventeen twelve two forty six Natchez Court Harold Weinhofer. Sixteen dash two three six zero two forty six Natchez Court Harold Weinhofer. And actually, the next one is, I believe, the same person. So I'll read that one as well. 20-0362, 246 Natchez Court, Betty M. Borges. Okay. So is Betty the new owner? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so I'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request. Exhibit 2, order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Okay, that's for case number whatever, 15. Oh, I'm sorry, that's 2362. Let me get the 15. Still go back to these next. <clears throat> Do you want all of these at one time, Doug? Yes, please. Take your turn, please. We'd like to enter the following into evidence for case 15 1252. Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request. Exhibit 2, order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 4, Affidavit of Compliance. Okay. Case 16, 17, 12, we'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, Fine Mitigation Request. Exhibit 2, Order Assessing Fine. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. Exhibit 4, Affidavit of Compliance. For case, uh, excuse me, 16 2360, we'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request, order assessing fine, verification of ownership, and affidavit of compliance. Oh, okay. did you do one? <clears throat> you did. Thank you. All right, that's all four of them. What are the numbers? Sure. In 15 1256, the fine amount is 30950 In case 16 1712, the fine amount is $425. 16-2360, $425, excuse me. And then 20-0362, $2,975. Okay. Thank you. All right, so two 425s? Yes, sir. And 29.75. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, Ms. Borges, why should the fine be reduced? Sir, at the time we were going through a rough financial time, we have, I have copies here of uh, the time we were going through foreclosure. Uh, in bankruptcy, right with the with the pool, um, fixing the pool, whatever. So we didn't have money to fix the pool, or because the pool had a leak. So anyway, um, we we have since then fixed the pool. Uh, or actually, I got rid of the husband and fixed the pool myself. And um, <laughs> and since then, everything has been up to code. I've had other issues, other permits that have been a straight arrow. That was just one phase in time that was not a good financial time for us. All right. And Harold was what to you? My ex-husband. Okay. A good man, but lazy. <clears throat> okay. And what does the village say? Well, so what should the fine be reduced to on the hat racking? Because that's most of it. The rest of these are going to be interesting. Are you asking her or me? Uh, we'll go for you, and then I'll ask her next. In the first case, we were not opposing reduction. We'd be amenable to reducing it to seven thousand forty-five dollars and eighty cents. But we understand the history. The the minimal fine four twenty-five amounts. We're opposing those just by virtue of the fact that there's still additional legal costs for the bills <coughs> to incur. Yeah. And then in twenty dash zero three six two, we'd be amenable to reducing it to one thousand three hundred eighty-four dollars and sixteen cents. All those uh, two payable by five eight. The first case and the last case. All right, so you've heard their numbers. What what does that add up to, please? Seven, seven thousand nine eight. Yeah, a little over nine thousand. Is there um is there any way that I could pay half and then another half, or or does that's, it all that's have a problem? To be, that's a problem. Yeah, because they don't do installments, no, so we no really have to. Can we push it out to June? Yes, that's fine. Yeah. June, the June date well, is 6. Well, no, just make it 6.30. We're going to give that's them a fine. chance. I mean, if you're going to get what you're kind of looking for in terms of the reductions, she should get some more time to deal with it. All right, so in 15-1256, I will reduce it from $30,950 to 
five dollars and eighty cents by six thirty. And I'm denying the reductions on sixteen seventeen twelve and sixteen twenty three sixty. Those are the two four hundred twenty five dollar ones because it's going to cost them two hundred fifty to four hundred dollars just to release these things on, on top of the fine. And on twenty twenty dash three sixty two. I will reduce the $2,975 to $1,300, just to make it even there. $1,300 by $630, and that gives you seven, seven, eight, just barely over $9,000 by June 30th. Okay? Mm -hmm. How do, am I going to get a letter on how that? You I are going that? to get orders signed by me that will have the amounts that you are owing, and then you'll have till June thirtieth to pay them. Okay. Okay. Right. If you don't pay them by the thirtieth, they bounce back up. So beg, borrow, or steal it to get it out out of your way, and then. This is know. my last skeleton from that marriage, so I plan <clears throat> on doing something. Okay. <laughs> Great. I will sign those orders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, working our way through the uh, we're actually, rest of it. Yeah, we have the final case on the agenda, the fine mitigations we're going to do next. It's 22 1354 166 Barrow Drive, Unit A, Althea Drummond. And the fine amount in this one is $775. Like to enter the following documents and evidence Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request. Exhibit 2, or previous order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification and ownership. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Okay. How much is the fine? $775. All right, Ms. Drummond, why should the fine be reduced? Sir, I was in court on the 11th of January. There was one exhibit that was shown on the screen where I had two or three jars to the side of the house. When I had spoke to Miss Margaret during the course of getting my premises ready, as I had said it last time in court, that she had asked for the barrier behind this second parking space to show the asphalt. When I was in court on the 11th, one exhibit was shown on the screen for two jars and a bottle to be removed. I went home because when I left here, it was at night. I woke early um, Thursday morning, about 6.30, and I asked my gardener to come and help me. He couldn't come. So I personally rolled the jars, get everything that was on the exhibit to the back of the house. I called on Thursday for a re-inspection. Margaret came over on Friday and told me on the, that would have been the 15th, that the supervisor, Miss Walker, now wants all the flowers in the pots to the side of the house to be removed. Okay, I called a friend who has a farm over Okeechobee, and I asked them if the flowers they could have kept for me for a while, while I in transition of something else. They said yes. We removed the plants that Margaret outlined to me to be removed. I took the plants over to Wabasa, paid somebody to took them over there. We took the plants over Wabasa with the landscaper that works over 166 Parra Drive. After the plants were removed, Margaret again removed the chains again. I called back, I said, can you have, can I have another um, reinspection? Margaret came back and says, well, it's not done because she sees something white. That's when I call the Palm Beach commissioner. I said something is wrong because when I was in court on the 11th, I was told to remove the jars at the side of the house. I did that within a couple hours. I called for one more re-inspection. Then she said, the supervisor said, the plants to the side mm, okay. must be you're, removed. You're just repeating yourself now. Okay. I, I get I, this. No, I get but this. sir, it's three times okay. during the course that I was told to do something, and I went ahead 
and complied. Then I came over here now on the, the 23rd, and I spoke to Margaret Boss, but Margaret wasn't here that Monday. I said, ma'am, I want this in writing. I can no longer work with Miss Margaret because whenever she tells me something and I complies, she tells me something else. Then she says, okay, what she will do, she will, Margaret wasn't in office that day. So on the next inspection, she, Miss Walker, will come to the premises to verify what was going on. On the 26th, I got a call from Miss Walker that she and Margaret will come to the premises on the 26th at 2 p.m. I said 2 p.m. was okay. They said 2.15 was fine. I said, I will be there. When Miss Walker and Miss Margaret came, Miss Walker walked to the side of the house and I had a table there and a half of a garden chair. She said to me, those two had to be removed. Then Miss Walker came to the front of the house and said that all the pot flowers pots in the planter box that is in pots must be removed. I said to Miss Walker, Miss Walker, Miss Margaret is here since last year, June. I've been communicating with her. And if she see this, the pots to the side that has to remove, if you drive up to the driveway, because we don't have a garage, you must see the two planters on both sides. So what ended up happening from the 11th when the 325 was started, every day, every two days, was added on, I did that, then another added on, and that's when I came and spoke to Miss Walker. I said, I can't have Miss Margaret tell me in bits and pieces. By mm -hmm. this, more money keep adding each day, each day I do what she said, and then that's when I came in and I said, this not making any sense at all, because if Miss Margaret is doing her job, she's supposed to know what to tell me, and I get it done. And what is so striking about that, if it's in front of the house and Miss Margaret did not see that for the last how many months, all this time is more money being added. And I think that was so wrong because if I did what was on the screen the next day, they should have actually opened another case if I had to do something more. But during that time, it's more money keep adding on day by day. I cried to Margaret. I said, Margaret, when is this going to be done? The last thing Miss Margaret told me on the 20th of January, she sees something white. I said, Miss Margaret, what are you talking about? That's when I called and came here and said, somebody has to come for evidence, put it in writing, and make it clear what needs to be done. And that's when I got Miss Walker in, and she came. And then on the 30th, I called and asked for another re-inspection. And Miss Walker said she wasn't in. And she said she heard the reinspection on the recording on the 30th, but she will date it on the 31st to the 30th of January. But it was a long haul from the 11th <laughs> to the 31st. It was five reinspection, reinspection with Miss Margaret. Because every time I do it the next day, I called, she came, then she said something else, then I did again, I called, then she said something else. And then I said, I need evidence now, because this seemed like it's not going to end at all. Okay. I remember you. Yes, sir. I remember your case. I remember the planters with the boxes and the stuff around the planters and things. I also remember the second exhibit, which was your driveway. Well, actually, it was your parking space. And the second exhibit had all of these planters in front of the wheel stop. It had pot, pots and other things. So there were two exhibits that I remember. Yes, but the, is, the, you no, were... No, no, oh, sorry, okay, sir. Okay, so, so I don't think that if you remove the only three things on the first exhibit, you would be fine because you had to remove everything else. Special your, Majesty, your stuff that just was kept, the only exhibit shown, kept, sir. No, there were two. There was one at the front of the house, or the, the, the unit, and there was another one of the parking. Sir, I did the parking where I had put the tube in the ground 
to have shown where the asphalt beyond the parking barrier ends and where that um, to where the ground started. That was in compliance because I had broke, showed you my broken phone where that was in compliance. What have what you did, you were saying you didn't know if you should charge my anything, but it had nothing to do with the exhibit on this side. It had to do with the jars that were visible on the screen, and that was what I did early Thursday morning because that was the only thing that was pending that my case did not close because I did comply with the mm -hmm. second parking barrier, but the jars were to be removed, and I did that Thursday morning and called early Thursday for the reading inspection. And then Miss Margaret said, the supervisor says, okay, then okay. I have we're to doing it. We're doing it for the third time now. All right, so what is the position of the village? This, we're going to leave this one to your discretion. This, again, is one of those lower fine amounts that are difficult to reduce because, again, there's still costs for tonight's order to be prepared. There's costs right. to release the fine. Just assuming the everything you said is correct. Yes, sir. If the, I assume everything you said is correct. And you did it the next day. Yes, sir. And you would have called for inspection the day after. Yes, you would sir. Have the, the day after that, it would be three twenty-five plus fifty, which would be three seventy-five. Assuming everything is correct. Yes, right. sir. Okay, I'll make it three seventy-five. Payable by five eight. Is that oh no, time? that's that's going to be like within thirty days. So thirty days is four ten. By four ten. That's my order. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. Now we're going back to page. Now we have strays left. Yeah, we're going back to page five, violation hearing. Case 22 1832 10585, Aquarius Lane, Erna Mall Branch, and Rebert Mall Branch. Code section is 14-4, disabled vehicle. I observed this violation on 12-122. Sent out notice of violation, certified mail on 12-222. It was delivered 12-522. Sent out notice of hearing, certified mail on 126-23. And it was uh, delivered on 130-23. Like then are the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. Exhibit 5, Affidavit of Compliance. Okay, so it's just a finding effect? Correct. Okay. Names for the record? Tell us who you are. Yeah. Your name? Rebert. Rebert. Your, okay, your name is Rebert Malbranch? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any objection to those documents that I just handed you? No. They're the notice documents for tonight's hearing. The photographs are on the screen. No. It's just a finding of fact on this one. Yeah, nothing's bad. So what did they do with the Lincoln? Moved it? Sold it? Did something? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I you, haven't you, seen you took that. care of the problem. You took care of the problem in time. You're going to get what's known as a finding of fact, which said you had a violation because you had an untagged car there. And, but you fixed it. But the next time you have an untagged car there, there's going to be no waiting or warning period. Okay. So nothing's going to happen to you this time. It's just going to say you did move the car. But if you get another car there that doesn't have a tag on it or something, they can fine you immediately. So make sure you just have whatever you have there either fits in the garage or is tagged and operable. Okay? But right now you're just going to get a finding of fact. It just said you, you had a problem. You fixed it. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a lovely thank evening. Thank you. Same page, bottom case, 22-1883-127 Rivera Avenue, Francis and Marianne Dumeg. Code section is 622-105.5. Permit 220832 has expired. This was brought to my attention on 12-22-22. Send out notice of violation certified mail on 12-27-22. Um, I received it back not signed on one. 523, so I posted it to the property, sent out notice of hearing on 123.23, and that was signed on 125.23. Like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, AS400 permit information. All right, please tell us who you are. I'm Marianne Dumick. Thank you very much. 
those documents I handed you, ma'am, are the exhibits we'd like to enter into the record. Do you have any objection to those documents? Well, I didn't. Um, the one one that you said wasn't signed, we didn't get it. So that's why I posted it to the property. Okay. Yeah, that's the, Other than have, that, they're, they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. They, they have two ways to serve you. If they get the return back, they don't have to post it. If they don't get the return back, they do. Um, did you have the walk-in bathroom? Never had it done. Okay. Um, we canceled it. I mean, I did, if you want to see, can't no, 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 check no, no, some. No, no. no, we what, canceled what, it. What is, um, the, what is the process for canceling the permit since you never had it done? They're in, they're in process doing it. Okay. The so you all figured it out? has to request to administratively close it. Okay, and the contractor has or is? No, I don't see Yeah, she, she talked to somebody today because I have the form that she sent in. and she I may also have emailed it. I just don't. Okay, no yeah, she did, email, she did email. She did email and said that the job wasn't done. Uh, my mother did sign the uh, form that has the, to reinstate the permit so that they can cancel it. Or okay. Whatever so, that is. But they said they'll pay all the fees. If not, I'll pay them, get them done. But no, we never had the work done. All right. So this one we're asking for the 427 compliance 427, date. 427, 5, yep, 10, 5, 10, 25. 25. So this means you have till the end of April to get the oh, they permit better, canceled. They better yeah. have it done before then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sick them. You, <laughs> you go get them. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. You have a wonderful evening. You too. All now right, we're going we to phase seven, seven in the little bit below the middle, 22-1963, 440 South State Road 7, number 100. San Joseph Properties, LLC. Gotcha. Code section is 622-105.5. Description, Village of Royal Palm Beach building permit is expired. This violation was written on 12-28-22. It was sent certified mail on 12-29-22 and signed for on 12-31-22. Notice of hearing was mailed on 2-16-23 and signed for on 2-21-23. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Permit Information. Thank you. Sign green cards equal service. We can proceed. Your name, sir? Esmir Palacios. Can you spell those for me? E-S-M-I-R. Last name? P-A-L-A-C-I-O-S. And your relation to the LLC? I am the property manager. Thank you, sir. Those Good documents I handed you are the village, uh, the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? No objection. Thank you. All right. So AC replacements, I think. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So did the air conditioners get replaced? Yeah. Um, but they never closed out the permits. They never got inspected, I assume. Yes. This is a, it's a, it's a mechanical infection, right? Uh, is open. Uh, the responsibility is a tenant rep responsibility, okay? It's a, it's a Aspen Dental. I talked to the Aspen Dental, it's a tenant, okay? In order, in, you know, to close out this permit. Uh, I received an email today from Aspen Dental, okay? Uh, inform me, uh, they, ha they have fill out, mm -hmm. fill out, okay? Uh, with the building department, okay? Uh, yesterday, uh, a new inspection in order to close the permit because you know that's it's, it's an open permit, right? No, it's a dead permit right now. It needs it's to be a fire open. permit, right? They, they just applied to uh, extend it. Yet, actually, today they went in. They went in today, so we should be able. Yes, to I received an email from, paid for. from the contractor. Another yeah. four twenty-seven, <laughs> so it gives them time to pay and close. Right. Three thirty. Three thirty. You want 330? We're asking for 330. Compliance by 330 or appearance at the April 12th fine assessment hearing or $25 a day fine. All right. So since this is already in progress, hopefully it will be done by the end of the month, which is what they want because it's been open for three years. So. Yeah, they need to make sure that they follow through and pay for it. Yeah. You need to make sure they pay for the extension because if they don't pay for the extension, it's last not year, right? Well, the case started last year. The permit's from 2019. Yes. So it's four years old. So, the so they need to make sure they get it paid and then get the final inspections. Yeah, but, they, they, okay, they, they got the extension last year, right? Yeah, but the extension expired. Expired. So they need to get another extension so they can get an inspection 
Because right now they can call for one and they're going to laugh at you. They have a renewal fee right now that is pending. They have to pay. So how much is that renewal fee? It's eighty-two fifty. So they need to pay eighty-two dollars and fifty cents to get this thing reopened. We open the permit and, and the inspection, can, right? And then they can get an inspection. But until they pay the eighty-two fifty, no one's going to inspect anything. Am I right? But then they need to get it inspected. Otherwise, if it expires again, they'll come as a repeat violation. And it'll be the, hundreds of dollars crazy a day. It's crazy that I mean, it's going to be time to replace the AC again before they get it inspected. <laughs> Hopefully, you have a good lease with Aspen, and they have to pay you all their code enforcement crap. So. 3-30-4-12-25? Yes, sir. Thank you. And this way, at least you have a date to say, look, if I don't get this done by the end of the month, you're going to end up paying for all these fines. So, yeah, this is the tenant response. So, so tell the tenant, you know, that eighty two fifty is going to save them hundreds of, or thousands of dollars in fines. Get their contractor to pay or get them to pay. Okay? Thank you, sir. And last, Next, we're moving to fine mitigations, page 9, case 22-1538, 600 Royal Commerce Road, Royal Commerce Park 2, I think that's supposed to be condo building, 600 LLC. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request. Exhibit 2, the order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, my affidavit of compliance. I don't have it notarized yet. That's okay. We will accept that you will have it notarized. I will. I'm just writing down his name because it's in the last order. Your name, sir? Rashan Ramani. Uh, spell your name for me. It's e R A S H A N T. Thank you. And special magistrate, the fine amount in this case is $6,225. 55. All right. All right, tell us why the fine should be reduced, Mr. Romani. Thank you, sir. Um, I, this was something which I, when I purchased the building, all these things popped up. I kept on working. It was hard to find the contractor, but finally I found the contractor. I pushed them, pushed them. I mean, I have checkbooks to show you that I paid them way in advance for all the work. You know how it is, contractor, it's not easy to get the work done. But finally, you know, after all the pushing, I was able to do so the work. And uh, now everything is in compliance. We'll make sure that everything remains compliant always because we learned our lesson. So we'll appreciate if you can, you know, waive the fine. Um, waive is not probably in our, our vocabulary, but reduce No, is. we're not opposing reduction. Our number is $1,971.38. All right, since you inherited this lovely fine, I'm going to reduce it to $1,500. Okay. Is that 5-8? Whatever date you want. Can, what, you pay that by May, okay. can you pay that by May 8th? I can pay by tomorrow. No, you can't because I won't <laughs> sign the order tomorrow. But we're going to give you till May 8th. You'll probably get – I usually sign these things on Monday. That's fine, which, which means I'm ready it. to pay and move on. Yeah, and, and, and I, I reduced it by 75%. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just that number because, was 1500 1,500 by 5 Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Thank We're you. going to take a two minute okay. break so I can go use the facilities and then we can rush through the rest of these. That's good. So That's if good. anyone else needs to, let's rush. I won't be long.
All right, case number 22-1506, whenever you're all ready. I take it that's the next one. 22-1506, Country Clubs Views, HOA, Country Club Views, Homeowners Association, Inc. That'd be the one. Fence installed without a permit. Come on, you're getting your exercise. Walking at speed is better than just walking That's slowly. That's true. Okay. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Exhibit 2, violation, or I'm sorry, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, permit information. Sign green card equals service. I don't have the permanent. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. And we have a double zeros. No, because it's. Yeah, the last fence permit the last fence permit they had was five ten of two thousand, so that's a bit old. I don't think this permit's still active. No, what would you like on this one? Because you do have service. Fine of a uh, what? Yeah, it's been out of comp. Oh wait, did it? Three one. Two three eight. Is it continuing? Yes. Yeah, yeah this has been out of compliance for seven days. One seventy five and continuing. Granted. 22-1595-1179 Oakwater Drive, Nancy Luberis and Croydell Merzius. I'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, permit information. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Wow, how nice. I was wondering if the building department had anything left in their file cabinets. <laughs> Gave it all to you. Is this a finding of fact or something? Like? No, this is a little, a small fine. Small fine? What's a small fine? Excuse me, it's been out for uh, 11 days, so it's 275 and not continuing. 275, no, no. no continuing. It's five, eight, oh, 11 days, okay. Granted. Thank you. <laughs> Page one is done. I we're trying, we're trying. Once closes at nine, I've got to get done by then. Uh, thank you. Next one is 22-1825, 720 Royal Palm Beach Boulevard, Christopher De Leon. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, pictures. Okay. We've got an Impala. And is it cleaned up? You have service via posting, by the way. Thank what's, you. What's the dealio here? How much? It's, it's still out of compliance. It's been out for 13 days, so we're asking for a fine of 325 and continuing. Continuing is granted. Thank you. 22-1861 is being pulled. 22-0983 is being pulled. 22-1381-84 Sparrow Court, Stephen and Tammy L. Richards. Permitless shed. Oh, a whole stack of... Uh... Can I turn it into... Oh, yes. You read oh. that in? You're on 84 Sparrow, yeah. right? You yeah. read it in. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, um, previous order fund in violation. Exhibit 2, oh, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, Verification Ownership. Exhibit 3, AS 400 Permit Information. And Exhibit 5, Four Pictures. Okay. They showed up last time. What, what, they didn't do anything, huh? They finally applied for the permit. They don't have it yet. Okay, well, they're going to get fine until we do 325 or No, this one is the seven days again, so 175, 175 and continuing. continuing is granted. Thank you. 22-1428, 140 Meadowlark Drive, S. And Luis C. Ortega. Signed green card equals service. Go like ahead. 10 others following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, AS 400 permit information. Exhibit 4, pictures. They showed up too. Look at that. Yep. Okay. Well, lead a horse, I guess. This All one right. again is seven days, so 175 and continuing. 175 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. 22-1581, 232 Bobeo Street, Darlene Fair Estate. Like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, AS 400 permit information. I'm not surprised that the estate didn't show up. Because no one's there. All right, so there. front door and window <laughs> inspection. No? 2, 15, 22, nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Crickets. 
This one's 13 days, so 325 and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. 22 1667 76 Ferro Terrace, Dana S. Davies. Like 10 of those following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order, find in violation, permit in village abatement, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, notice of fine assessment hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, public work work order. $286. Please. Yes, and one correction, 1540 is on your agenda. That needs to be stricken. That's the vertical clearance not met. Okay, yes, so it's just grass and weeds, and it's 286. 286, which covers $80 for abatement and 206 in administrative costs. Granted. Thank you. Very expensive lawn mow. Yes. 22 1847 138 Dove Circle Progress Residential Borrower uh, 1 LLC. Like 10 others following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order, find in violation, USPS tracking. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Exhibit 4, affidavit compliance. All right, so sign green card equals service. Is there a fine here? There is. It was out of compliance for 11 days, so 275 and not continuing. 275, no continuing. Thank you. Violation hearings next. 22-1539 is being pulled. 22-1551 is being pulled. I like Thank this. You. 22-1603-1766, Annandale Circle, Gideon, and Yvette Brown. Oh, Madison Green, that's why I don't know the address. Code section is 9-4, fences and disrepair. I observed this on 9-21-22. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 9-21-22. And oh, what am I doing? Yeah, I have a permit 22 expired. And you have a fence and disrepair. Okay. I can't see it on this page. Okay. We'd like to enter the following. <laughs> we'll start over. Yes. Take Code a deep breath. Section 6221055.5. Permit 220301 is expired. This was um, written on 92722. The notice of violation was mailed out 92822 and have actual service. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail on 126.23 and was signed for on 27.23. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, permit information. All right, sign green card equals service, would you like? Compliance by 427 or appearance at the May 10th fine assessment hearing or $25 a day fine? Granted. Thank you. 22-1633-10075, Mikado Lane, Erica Marine, and... Waldemar Medina. Code section 622108.4, work done without a permit, the garage door. I observed this on 930.22. The notice of violation was mailed out 10422 and was posted. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail on 1623 and was signed for on 1923. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, <coughs> Pictures, Exhibit 5, Affidavit of Compliance. Finding a fact or what? Finding a fact, yes, sir. Granted. Thank you. 22-1645-861, Azalea Drive, Sear St. Manouche. Code section 622-108.4, work done without a permit, pavers. I observed this on 10-5-22. The notice of um, violation was mailed out 10-7-22 and was posted. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail on 1623, and I have actual service. We'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation, affidavit of service, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. Now, I look at that picture and go, we just got the papers. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> what would you like with the rest of it? This 427, one, 427, or 510, or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22-1703-882, Hibiscus Drive, Nickinson, Cassis, and Jean Nordelis. Code section 1557-06190, A15, 12-4C, and 14-2. The grass and weeds exceeds height allowed. The sidewalk is stained. Garbage can is in public view and miscellaneous items. I observed this on 10 20 -22. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 11-2-22 and was posted. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail on 126.22 and was signed for on 10.7.23. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, pictures. All right, sign green card equals service. Look at the pictures. Exhibit 1, notice of 
six. And in this one, Special Magistrate, the 1557, which is the grass and weeds, is a finding of fact. Well, I'm shocked anything grows without any water. Uh, six, two. All right, so the 622, is that it? Or the one nope, 1557. Grass and weeds exceed height allowed. That's finding a fact. The okay. remaining code sections, we're asking for compliance by 427 or the 510 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Sure. Thank you. Granted. Thank you. 22-1731, 114 Segovia Court, Daryl and La Cognina, Daryl and La Cognina Trust Title Holder, and Daryl and La Cognina Trustee. Code section 622-105.5, permit 16-21-16 is expired. This was written on 10-24-22. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 10-25-22 and was posted. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail on 1-6-23 and was also posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, an affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing, an affidavit of service. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, permit information. Exhibit, Exhibit five, 5, affidavit, affidavit of compliance. compliance. And boy, they must be digging in the back of their drawer to find this 2016 permit. <laughs> <laughs> Finding a fact. fact is granted. Thank you. 22 1755 11845 Balsam Drive, Juana M. Machado Estate, Sonia L. Bachara, Minerva Nall, Maria C. Pease, Orlando Pease, and Sandra Sabori. Code section 06 190 A13 and 594 14 2. Sidewalk and driveway are stained. The gate is in disrepair. Debris in the, uh, is in the rear yard. I observed this on 10 27 22. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 11 2 22 and was signed for on 11 10 22. The notice of hearing was sent out 12 7 22 and was posted. I'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1 Notice of Violation, Exhibit 2 Notice of Hearing and Affidavit of Service, Exhibit 3 Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 4 Pictures. All right, Affidavit of Service of Service. What do we have here? And on this one, Special Magistrate 0690A13 and 5, which is the sidewalk and driveway are stained, is it finding a fact? Okay. The remaining code sections, 94 and 142, are asking for compliance by 427. Gate and disrepair, debris and rear yard are still good. 427, 510, 25. 25 yes, is granted. Thank you. 22 1788, 129 Queens Lane, Cecilia and Gregory Hannigan. Code section 2667, two pods placed on the property without a permit. I observed this on 11-3-22. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 11-8-22 and was signed for on 11-10-22. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail 12-7-22 and was posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing and affidavit of service. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, pictures. Service via posting is good service. You can proceed. This is actually a finding of fact. After all that buildup, finding of fact is granted. 22-1873-1209 Grandview Circle, Yesenia Delphi. Peas in a pod. Code section 06190D and 15132 planning areas are overgrown. I observed this on 12-19-22. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 12-27-22 and was signed for on 1523. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail 11723 and was posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing and affidavit of service. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership and exhibit 4 pictures. Posting is good service. Again, finding a fact, please. Finding a fact is granted. Thank you. Thank you. 22-1952-667 Royal Palm Beach Boulevard, Jaha Holdings, LLC. Jaha. Code section 622-105.5, permit 212049 is expired. This was written on 122722. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 122822 and was signed for on 11123. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail on 12623 and was signed for on 2123. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, pick, excuse me. Uh, permit mm. information. Yes, and signed green cards equal service. And uh oh, it's like yeah, they did something at the end of twenty two. Yeah, I sent it to you. This one we're asking for compliance by three thirty or the four twelve fine hearing or twenty five dollar day Thank fine. Three thirty four twelve twenty five is granted. It's too easy to fix. Thank you. Twenty two dash eighteen twenty four two fifty three Las Palmas Street, Lisa R. Seeley. Yeah, it's only three letters or three numbers. Where are we? Lisa. Oh. 
Code section 06135 and 124C, House numbers are now posted on structure, garbage can, and public view. I observed this violation on 11-30-22, sent out notice of violation, certified mail on 11-30-22, and posted it to the property. Sent out a notice of hearing, certified mail on 123-22, and posted that as well. I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit 3, verification ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. All right. I see the house number. Yes, that's a finding of fact on the house numbers. Okay. So that's 06135. 06 finding of fact. fact, they've made it to a store. And then the other section, 124C, we're asking for compliance by 427 or the 510 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. It's giving a long time to move that garbage can, but okay. Yes, sir. Granted. Thank you. Months to move the garbage can. 22 1876 109 Sherwood Drive, Progress Residential Bar, or 1 LLC. Code sections 91 and 942, replace fence without a permit and fence in disrepair. I observed this violation on 12 2022. Sent out notice of violation certified mail on 12 21 22. It was picked up on 1 9 23. Sent out notice of hearing certified mail on 1 23 23. And it was signed for on 1 30 23. Like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. I believe it got the USPS tracking on there. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 3, Verification Ownership, Exhibit 4, Pictures, and Exhibit 5, PS400, Permit Information. So they replaced part of the fence and left some bad part and, left? And the back part's all fallen in. Uh, what? Why would you stop? They run out of money? I don't know. Yeah, you have a USPS tracking firms, you have service, what would you like? This one, Compliance by 427 or the 510 fine here, and your $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22-1905-220 Behringer Walk, confidential record. I'm sorry, I didn't give you that one, I don't believe. Code section 622-105.5, permit 212771 has expired. This uh, violation was brought to me on 12-22-22, sent out notice of violation certified mail on 12-28-22, signed for on 1-7-23, sent out no a notice of hearing certified mail on 12023 and posted that to the property. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing, Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 3, Verification Ownership. Exhibit 4, AS400 Permit Information. Exhibit 5, Affidavit Compliant. Okay, well, I've been here long enough that I'm reading an AS400 like a novel, <laughs> following the things as they go from their requesting an extension to their payment of the fee on page 2. <laughs> Paid way too much attention. Finding a fact? Yes, sir. Granted. Thank you. They're still doing COVID-19 green cards. How nice. I wish. I look, 420 people a week were dying. Still, or 240 people were dying in Florida. Special Magistrate, I was just made aware that the respondent in the fine mitigation case on the bottom of page 8 is back and would like to speak further. Okay. That's case 15 1256 246 Natchez Court, Harold Weinhofer. Yep. Or Hofer. Ma'am? Hi there, sir. Um, I would like to ask if you would reconsider um, maybe bringing down the fee maybe a little bit more. Why? I just asked my ex husband if you would help me pay for it, and he won't. Well, I so. kind of figured that. I thought you were doing this on your own. I beg your pardon? <clears throat> So, does she have a, an amount in mind? Yeah, what do you, uh, I had you down to nine. What are you talking about? Four. No. That's. Can we meet halfway? It's not like, let's make a deal normally. I understand that. I just want to be good on my word and be able to pay for it. Well, I don't want to do an order that you can't pay for because it's going to just basically kill you. Exactly, exactly. All right, one, two. The village would not oppose reducing it. I'm going to leave everything but... 
the big one. So right. what are we going to do with the big one? We, I reduced that from 30 to 7. What are we going to do? 3,200. 3,200? We would not oppose that. By 630. And magically, $4,000 goes away. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it's 3200 on the big one. The others remain the same. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Going back. Right, back to Bob White. Yes, sir. 23-0013180 Bob White Road, Jonathan M. Halpert and Tanya M. Weiss. Code section 14406198.3. Vehicle is not moved. In 30 days disabled. Yes, it did because you have an after driveway stain under vehicle. I observed this violation on 1623. Sent out a violation certified mail on 11323. It was delivered on 11723. Um, sent out notice of hearing on 2123. That was delivered on 2223. Like to enter the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification on ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. Exhibit 5, affidavit compliance. Finding effect is granted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 23-0018 is being pulled. 23-0059 is being pulled. 23-0081 is being pulled. Yeah, you're on a roll. 22-1724-10155, Okeechobee Boulevard, Target Corporation. Thank you. Is that one of these or no? Are these all pulls? Are these your pulls? Good, good. Okay, target. The code section is 622-105.5. Permit number 213150 is expired. This violation was written on 1024-22, was sent certified mail 1025-22, and signed for on 1031-22. Notice of hearing was sent 216-23 and signed for on 221-23. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, AS400 Permit Information. Okay, do they even have a Pizza Hut in there anymore? Because they moved the Starbucks over to where the Pizza Hut was. was yeah. right. And here's the Pizza Hut, Pizza Oven Hood installed. Mm -hmm. And we have no Pizza Hut anymore. Yeah, but they still cannot have a... Uh, they need to close the permit. But yeah. They don't have a Pizza Hut. And if the hood is still there, they have to get it inspected. Uh, I don't know. I think it's been fully starbuckled, but I don't know what they... <laughs> I, I mispronounced it, of course, on purpose, because I'd never pay seven <laughs> bucks for a buck, cup of coffee. But okay, so what do we want with these? This one, we're asking for compliance by 330 or the 412 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Now I got to pay attention next time I go in there just to make sure there's no hood on there. See, I gave I, you homework. I paid attention to the Starbucks thing; they moved it from one side to the other. I gave you homework. Yeah. 22-1725 is being pulled. 22 oh, dash cool sky. 22-1965-9940 okay. Belvedere Road A RVS Royal Palm Beach. Code section 622-105.5. Description permit number 22-687 fire alarm expired. This violation was written on 12-28-22. It was sent certified mail 12-29-22, and it was signed for on 1-18-23. Notice of hearing was mailed on 2-16-23, and it was signed for on 3-1-23. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit verification of ownership and exhibit 4 AS400 permit information. Do you have a copy of the green card on the hearing? Uh, no, I don't, but I see the track and confirm, so that's good. No, you have a green card. Oh, that's good. You have a green card. That's even better service than the USPS track and confirm. All right, so wireless, I, I thought it was the CVS. No, it's RVS, and I guess they have some sort of radio communications because they wanted a wireless and tower. Radio. It's a finding of fact. It's a finding of fact. Granted. 22-1966 is being pulled. Yay. 22-1968-500 Business Parkway, Florida, Power and Light Co. Wow. Code section 622-105.5. The description is Village of Royal Palm Beach. Building permit number 22561 is expired. 
This violation was written on 12-28-22, sent certified mail 12-29-22, signed for on 1-3-23. Notice of hearing was mailed 2-16-23, and it was signed but not dated. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. <clears throat> Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Permit Information. Okay, I'll take signed but not dated. This is service. <coughs> Fire alarm, cell conversion. This is a finding of fact as well. All that for nothing. Finding of fact, correct. <laughs> Thank you. 22 da excuse me, 23-0140107 South State Road <coughs> 7, Bay Point, LLC. The address is 107 South State Road 7, just code section 622-108.4. Parking lot was reseal coded, paved, and restriped without a permit. This violation was written on 11923. It was sent certified mail 13023 and signed for them 2123. Notice of hearing was mailed on 21623. And <coughs> we're going to pull this case. And it's pulled. I don't have service. So 23 dash Why did I think I had service? You have a green card on the top. Is that for something else? Hold on a second. Give yourself a second to look through this. No, I don't. And it just says it's moving through the network. Oh. No. My no. USPS isn't right. All right, never mind. So 23-0140 is being pulled. Okay, that makes us done, right? Yep. Except I have to sign the minutes that Hunter is pushing towards me definitely. Please let the record reflect that I am signing the minutes. And is there anything else to be brought before the board? No, sir. And 822, we are done.